Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, No Mercy here. It is Tuesday night, so you already know what time it is. <clears throat> it's time for No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. Some of you probably already know who I am. Those of you that are new and don't, my name is Brooke Milbrook, formerly known as Brooke No Mercy Deardorf in the fight business. I am a retired professional WBC lightweight champion, and I was inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame in 2022. I have personally been through some good, some bad, and of course, a lot of bullshit in the sport of women's boxing. Welcome to my platform. This is where we will talk the talk and walk the walk. We will bring out the truth in women's boxing and behind the scenes. You're going to hear from pioneers of the sport, past boxers, current boxers, and even future future boxers. We'll be getting down and dirty, speaking the truth of what takes place in women's boxing. You definitely don't want to miss a show. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share to your friends and let everybody know to come join us on Tuesday nights. Now, we have a very special guest in the house tonight. Maureen Shea, a.k.a. the real Million Dollar Baby, is in the house. Maureen is a true veteran in the sport <clears throat> who is still out here taking on these rookies and taking them to school, y'all. Maureen is originally from the Bronx, New York. She is the former IFBA junior featherweight world champ, former WBC interim champ, NABF featherweight champ, and the NABA featherweight champ. She is one of the top pro female boxers in the world. Aside from her amazing boxing skills, she's also known for her role as the main sparring partner for Hillary Swank in preparation for the movie, The Million Dollar Baby. She was nominated by MTV as one of their 2008 toughest coaches for the show Made. She has also done commentating as a boxing analyst and has had her own TV show called Shay's Corner. Please help me welcome Maureen to the show. What's Hi. up, Sam? How are you? <laughs> I'm good, Brooke. It's so I just, you know, I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me on and thank you for what you do. And um, I've, I've watched you throughout my career and I, I have such a huge amount of respect for you. And I love that you're doing this. It's so important because, you know, like you said, we're, we're from a different era. And I just really, really appreciate this. I'm really excited to be here and to be able to share a bit of my story and, and just, you know, chop it up with you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And it's an it's an honor to have you here as well. I mean, we definitely fought at the same in the same era. <laughs> Um, you definitely surpassed me a little bit. I had I had got pregnant with my second one. And, oh, you had babies. That's yeah, great. Man, babies. mom's the uh, toughest I've got one. Three babies now. Um, but I when I got pregnant oh, with God the second bless. one, I was like, you know what? I already had the WBC belt. I wasn't making any money. I had two kids then, and yeah. I was like, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna retire. Um, yeah. I, I, I thought about coming out many times, but I just yeah. had another one a year and a half ago, so oh, probably not gonna cool. happen at this point. I'm too out of shape, but. You know, it's tempting. It's tempting. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so great to have you here. Um, Thank you. You have a, a phenomenal story. Um, Thank you. And I mean, I I already knew your story, most of it. I mean, I obviously did a little research, but I pretty much already knew everything about you. There is to know. <laughs> that's what we did back in the day. Is we yep. knew about everybody. Yeah. Um, yep. So um, I guess for everybody that's in here, maybe take us back to like your childhood in the beginning and like how you got hooked on boxing and took that road. So um, I grew up in the Bronx, in the Bronx, New York. Uh, I was born to a Mexican mom and an Irish dad. My dad was a retired NYPD detective and my mom worked for the airlines. So growing up, uh, a, a lot of people didn't know that I speak fluent Spanish. So I would travel back and forth from, from New York to, to Mexico a lot, quite a bit with my mom. I was very, very fortunate to be able to do that. And uh Actually, Spanish is my first language. I learned it kind of at the same time as English. So I don't exactly know why I know what I know, but I know how to speak fluent Spanish. Um, but hanging out, being around there and being um, really submerged in that culture was something just so, so fascinating and so amazing that I look back now and I realize it. Um, I really had the best of both worlds. Um, and then, you know, I, I had my brother was 10 years older than me and we're very different. So I think I, he moved out when I was 14 years old. So I was kind of an only child. Um, but I definitely at a young age was very strong spirited and I had, you know, I, I say I had emotional issues, but I, what kid doesn't have emotional issues, <laughs> but like, you know, I was kind of just, um, you know, going through my thing and, and, and trying to figure out, you know, how to express myself and, um, you know, growing up in the Bronx was tough and, and trying to figure things out, hanging out with the right people, the wrong people and getting, you know, getting frustrated, just not being able to express myself with all that energy. So my mom had put me in multiple sports. 
and uh, I know nothing really stuck. And so I, till I found yeah. boxing, but I found boxing by accident. So it was kind of, kind of a fluke thing. I wasn't raised in the sport. Um, the only person that I ever saw a fight was Mike Tyson when he bit a Vander Holyfield's ear. And ironically, what I connected with in Mike Tyson was his, his emotions because yeah. not that I've wanted to bite somebody's ear, but I've had that rage where I just wanted to, you know, break something or, and I had yeah. a lot, of, I had, you know, I struggled a lot with that as a kid, breaking things, not being able to vocally, you know, and I think that's why I'm so good now with my words because yeah. I just didn't have them when I was younger. And so, you know, breaking things in the house, getting into fights, you know, things like that. But when I found, I saw that fight, I was like, man, that's, you know, I was 15, I think 15 or 16. And I was so fascinated. I didn't even care what was happening. Like I just said, man, I want, I felt like that. So then fast forward, I'm 17 years old. I find myself in an abusive relationship and um, I go to a gym, a fitness gym to better myself to get, you know, if I work out and, you know, cause he worked out and uh, I went to the back of the gym and there was a boxing ring and I was like, oh, and I, I, re I remember Tyson. I remember that. And I was like, oh, I want to try. And the trainer came up to me and everybody was speaking Spanish and the trainer came up to me in English and said, do you want to try? And I said, oh, and I started speaking in Spanish because I was like, how am I going to connect with these people? You know, and he was super Willie Soto. I still talk to him today and he's a wonderful human being and he's had a huge impact in my life, let alone my career. And he just took me in and um, gave me his time. And I just kept going. He kept telling me, he called me Guerra. And he's like, you're going to be a champion. And I didn't realize he found out I was Mexican and Irish because he wanted to know why I speak Spanish. And then I didn't know that Mexicans and Irish are like the best fighters. Yeah. So here I am. Like, oh my God, we got a live one. Yeah, I exactly. had no idea. You know, I had no clue that it was even in my blood that it was. And so, you know, I go back and I just, I'm like, it had to be, you know, it had yeah. to be there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> Eric sent me a message, said you're a little staticky again. Can you do a quick refresh? Yeah. Uh, so I go to the, uh, so refresh the whole thing. You want? To, yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> She'll be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. She's just doing a refresh so we can get rid of that little static that she's got going on on her um, audio. Make sure it's clear for you guys. Ta-da. Is that better? Is it better, Eric? Hopefully. I think it's better. Oh, it is better. Okay. okay. All right, good. <laughs> Um, all right. Awesome. So I know that you, um, always have kind of spoke at you started boxing at the age of 19. Um, like you said, you were looking for somewhere to channel all that energy and, um, being able to express yourself in some kind of way. Um, and you always talked about how boxing literally like saved your life. Um, can you tell everybody a little bit of, of how, and maybe other people can kind of connect with that and maybe they can connect with boxing to help them. I think for me, it was every day and the challenges and just really a place to, to high energy. And I didn't really know where to put it. And when I went to the gym, uh, they just really, you know, helped me a, a lot, even with my mind. We worked together. And believe it or not, I had, I was, yeah, I didn't want to deal with college and all this stuff, but I ended up going to college and thing helped me with that because it helped me release this energy and helped me to focus. You know, and it also, I think it, it's really the way that it worked my brain. I realized, cause like, oh, like they think boxers are dumb sometimes. And I'm like, they have to be they pretty, do. you know, there's a lot that goes into it. And I love the challenge. So that was it. And I never shied away from a challenge and I can't do something. And so I, I that makes me, I thrive on people doubting me. But, you know, for the beginning, in the beginning, in my career in the beginning of training i boxed to get out of this abusive relationship um told me in this house you have to work and go to school you can't do all three and i said okay now then i boxed to prove my father wrong then hillary swank i'm working with her for a million dollar baby and now sparring partner now i'm trying to prove that i'm not just a sparring partner you know then it's like oh well she's lucky and then i'm so i always fought you know, and to, I had to figure out how it was to fight for me. When I started realizing, like, I've rediscovered my why so many times as women. And I know that you can completely relate to this. You know, I'm 42 yeah. years I've reinvented myself so many times that these think they are who they are. They have no idea who they are right now. No. They're going to read over and over again. And that's why I embrace my my 40s, my 40s, I'm embracing my 50s because I'm like, man, I have 
see me, even the evolution of my career, you know, great, um, you know, a great platform for me to kind of evolve great space for me to do that uh, and to learn and to grow and to challenge Never would have been challenged. Yeah. But something that I've always gone back and said parents couldn't because it's unforgiving, giving. And I think that, you know, I love that I see the art, you know, because I think that it's, it's going to really, it's going to help other women. Yeah. You know, because now we're, we're, we're where we are now, like, you know, what we spoke about a bit, people need to hear the stories of the one Olympic. Yeah. The women, I remember when I turned pro five, I'm like, what's next? I always did what's next. Yeah. Just, what, what are we doing? You know, I, Obviously, I love to succeed. I love what's the point. Like I played softball. I'm like, all right, what's the point? What am I doing? Do I like it? I'm not really a team sport person because I felt like, like I was, you know, but I was just right. always so, it was that energy, I think. Back and I'm like, all right, well, what's next? And you know what? I'm still on that path. I'm still here because I can be. People are like, why do you do this? I don't need, it's not, it's not even, it's not about the money, but yeah, it is. I mean, the money's there, but I do um, so my why is pretty solid yeah because i don't listen when i i want something that's all you're lot. gonna do it yeah absolutely because i've always been that i've always been like that that's exactly and anybody that from me as a kid my mother would tell you that my whole family all my yeah and you know especially in boxing like you have to really want it i mean you have to yeah you have to really want it get punched in the face yeah especially for the sh- yeah, I mean, we make? I think we're all a little, um, we, we're wired differently. We'll just put it that word. Wait, we're Listen. wired differently. Listen. You have to really Listen. want it in order to I do it. Tell, I tell people, I say, Listen, I've been therapy, so going to therapy because I enjoy punching people in the face. That's what I do. Something off. And I'm totally okay with that. Like, listen, now I've just accepted who I am. Yeah. And I accept that there's going to be moments of change. Change and I don't walk in a room and think I know it all. I know I can learn, and but I, I I'm very particular with who I surround myself with because that are going to, you know, to raise my bar. You know, I, yeah. I want I want them to raise my bar. Exactly, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so I know you just like me. You did not have a very big, extensive amateur career. Um, I think you had like maybe I don't know, 15 mm-hmm. fights or something. Well. Uh, well, 12. Yeah, I had, I think I had four, I had 14 or 15 amateur fights. Um, so I didn't have very many yeah. either because I couldn't get fights, which I know is the same thing that yeah. happened with you. Um, but I know you did have some yep. titles and you had some um, good fights. Do you want to tell a, just a little bit about some yep. of the titles you had and your amateur experience? Yeah. Well, so in the amateurs, I did those. I fought my second fight. Um, I, I Well, my first fight against girl who had more experience than me. I won. But let me tell you something was so low from my abusive relationship and I was going through that I actually thought I lost that, that fight. Like, this is a lot. And some people will hear this and be like, what? Yeah, I raised my hand and said I won. I looked at the ref and I said I really lost, didn't I? So I felt, and nobody knew this because people don't know. You don't know. What no. And, I, and I, I really... And they and and the ref looked at me, okay. So it was like you know I was struggling with this eternal foxing fight my whole career. I knew I had a good work ethic. I know I really embraced and accept that I was talented. Yeah. And you know back in our day, as you know, there weren't a ton of female. And the coaches, you know, I had some pretty tough coaches. I had early on in my career. You know, I, ha- I had one particular coach and he was very hard and he was very, um, you know, I would say abusive. So I don't know if he meant to do that or if he thought like, oh, if he could get the best out of me, but it was damaging. Yeah. It damaged me most of my pros. And, um, you know, I had to heal from that. And I'm healing from an abusive relationship. Now I'm healing from this damage. I'm sitting here thinking like, why am I doing this? But you know, power is God. And I just said, you know, God, like God has a plan for my life. Jeremiah yeah. 
And I had to believe that because I get the chills because here. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know why he chose boxing for what I've been able to do with this platform and help people and just like, okay. And the people I've connected with and the people that I've connected outside of myself, there's a reason. Yeah. And so amazing. And so, you know, after that, um, you know, I, I live and um, I, I, you know, I, I won my first title was the NABF title, which, uh, you know, it was on, uh, it was in Saratoga Springs and it was on Lisa Elevich. I'm now partners with, Ali with Lisa Elevich with uh, one with, I'm, I'm part owner of a tequila, of this tequila company with Lisa Mancini and Larry Holmes. And it's funny how full circle happened to me afterwards because, you know, we, we made a connection. Yeah. So it's interesting because these titles, every time I had a title in life, even when I lost, I still won in life. Yeah. Everything that boxing, I still won in life because I didn't want to give up. It was not giving up in life. And realizing that boxing didn't define me. Yeah. And I think there was, there was, a moment there because for a long time I think I allowed boxing to define me and her and and it was it was pretty bad where I didn't know if I'd be able to box anymore yeah and then I I, I you know I just I remember because they told me I would box again and all the stuff and I'm like what am I gonna do and my mom I was in Florida visiting my family I lived in California give it to God and I heard him him audibly people they tell me to do service no idea what that meant it's the do service what? i went back to california and i was approached by the ymca they ran some stuff in the ymca and he asked me if i would come speak to to and i was like okay okay and i just went in and shared my story next thing i know i was getting approached by juvenile jails and i just went off and i started doing this speak all over california yeah you know, and I was like, this is, I mean, I did all this for free. I didn't ask for any money. And I just had Mazda approach me and I got a sponsorship with Mazda, not because of my boxing speak and my ability to share, my ability to help. And I said, I had the chains that I allowed boxing to have on me were really so much more than the sport. And I'm so much more than, and I think that's very, that I could, I want people to take from this. I mean, we have a lot to talk about but thing unless you allow, allow it to define you yeah to understand that you don't have to like it, it just it just, we put ourselves in boxes you know and i put myself in a box it was like man and then i won these titles i mean i won the i the wbc intro and on to fight i fought for my first world title fight was for the wba and i lost and i and i and i, I lost the fight and and, um, you know, I, I dropped, it was on, on the top ranks card on Miguel Cotto's under card. I had such, like, I could sit here and tell you for days, everything. And even now what I do, boxing just opened up a world for me that I never, never knew was even, I hadn't followed through with the sport and I hadn't pushed and, and over, I, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Exactly. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> Erica's messaging me again. Can maybe we try taking the headphones out and then, or the earbuds out and then do another okay. reset? Okay. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Stick with us. We just want to make sure that it's clear. And I know if it's choppy on my end, it's choppy on your end. I can hear her. It's just like delayed. So hopefully when we get this, maybe it's, maybe it's her earbuds that's making it do that. Okay. I'm back. Okay. That sounds better right now. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. I think it was just like, it was almost delayed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, he says perfect. Okay. Like, good. Sometimes I like the earbuds. I know. I know this technology. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Hey, whatever. It's working now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, the, you got that one. Then the WBC interim title next yep. um, in 2011. Um, yep. Was that like your most memorable, like your best? Like I don't know. Um, I was like super ecstatic when I won the WBC. You know, was that so was it like that for you? Was that like your favorite belt, or do you have a favorite? You know, I never did because I was struggling with my own personal stuff, 
that I just felt like I, I couldn't even connect with my success in boxing yeah. because I was still healing from my emotional scars and from yeah. the ability to accept love and to accept loving myself and to accept good things. So I can't honestly, and I'm very honest and transparent and authentic. I, I can't honestly say I have a favorite belt. I've never, I don't know, but I can tell you that the experience was magical because I know when I went out there, I was, I was being judged a bit because I didn't look like a fighter. And yeah. then I remember being in the locker room and I had met Nacho Berenstein and, you know, and he was like, oh, you know, obviously a pretty girl, you know, I'm in a dress, right. the press conference, the whole thing. And then he saw me hitting mitts in the locker room before the fight and they watched my fight. They were like, like, cause I look like a different person in the fight. Yeah, you do. Every day, but I do, we all do. Yeah. So the best, but you know, the guys are different cause they look the same all the time. They do. I mean, <laughs> but know, we put like our we hair up or braid it or, and then we got, we the take the makeup off if you're wearing it. Yeah. The energy, the energy is different. And it's just, it's like, again, I'm not trying to be like the guys. I'm very happy being a woman and I love how I fight, you know, but I respect the guys. Don't get me wrong, but we're just different and embrace that. I love that. But what's really, what was really fun about that fight, because I can tell you stories about every one of my fights. Um, I have a great memory and they've just impacted me so much. What was cool about that fight was it was me and my coach, Joseph Janik went to, we went to, um, we were fought in Los Mochis in Sinaloa. And um, I remember when we went there, it was it was a soccer stadium. It was huge. And it was actually cold outside. And he was like, so uh, he's so we had like a driver that was driving us around. And he wasn't really with the promotion. They brought him in. He was a friend of a friend. And the promotion, Hector Garcia, wonderful people. They really took care of everybody. You know, they were yeah. just very well. They were just very well done. Anything we needed. But anyway, this this young guy was driving us around. And um, Haas was like, Haas was my coach. He goes, hey, what do you think if we ask him to work the corner with us? Because I just need somebody to put the stool in. I'm going to do your cuts. I'm going to do everything. And I was like, all right. So we literally had him and he invited his whole family. That to me made it special because I gave him the cornerman jacket. He kept it. We still yeah. talk on Facebook. Like he worked the corner of a world title fight. Right. You know what I mean? And to him, awesome. to me, it, it didn't. And I'm not saying that it didn't mean anything to me. It was my struggles. But like yeah. to him, it was like, this is as close as he's ever going to get. You know what right. I mean? As, as, and, and his family was there and he was in the corner and he was so proud. And I was yeah. so happy to be able to, to, to give that to somebody, yeah. you know? Exactly. And so I think that's what made it so. And the fact that it was just me and coach out there and I knew nobody. I mean, granted, I'm Mexican and I speak Spanish. I connected. But the Mexican the, the Mexican fans, they love you no matter what. They, they'll love you, you know, if, you, if you fight hard. You know, yeah. I you do. Fight hard, and, that's um, all they care about. I, that's my most memorable fight and not because that's the fight that I won the WBC title in, but the experience that I had, the, the rematch that I had the second time I fought Mia St. John when I won the title was in Mexico because she wanted the rematch in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, but I, I was there like 10 days before because we had to do the, you know, we went to like the children's hospital and saw the kids and we went and post fight press conference and the public workout and like everything. But I didn't have an interpreter and I don't speak fluent Spanish. I mean, I know no, small you words. don't. <laughs> God, like, and so, but it was, that's the only time that I ever really felt like I was somebody because I couldn't, th- there's such diehard boxing fans in Mexico. Yeah. It's really, and I was the freaking opponent. I didn't, they didn't think anybody would know who I was. They I didn't think anybody would know me or want to talk to me or I couldn't even leave the room. Like every time I walked outside of my hotel room, I was bombarded by people wanting yeah. pictures, autographs. Yeah. I mean, I'd That's go tough. sit down and eat and I'd have 50 people come up and ask me for a photo while I was trying to eat. So but I mean it it was nice and it was humbling. Yeah. Because I wish we could get that in USA. In the United States. I mean, but I, you don't. I mean, I can walk around. People know me like in my hometown because they knew me from school and they know that I'm a fighter. But other than that, I can count on one hand how many times somebody recognized me, even when I was the current champion. Very rarely did it happen. And so, but over there, we were like celebrities. Oh, it was yeah. insane. And I, I, and I said, I, I was kind of glad when I came home because I was like, you know, Man, I know how these <laughs> actors and stuff feel like when they can't get a moment to breathe, like when they go somewhere. I'm like, 
man, it's kind of nice to like be able to just like not yeah. be bothered for a second because it was 10 days, but it was just so humbling. Like I wish I could have fought every fight there. I know. It's so funny. I fought, I don't even know how many, maybe 10 fights out there. I fought in, in Tijuana. I fought there a bunch of times. And you know, Mexican girls are tough. And I don't just say because I, I'm Mexican. Man, like they come oh, to tough. fight. They're yeah. tough. And I and I and I remember like, oh, you're going to Mexico. Like I'm buying a fight. I'm like, you don't buy. Are you kidding me? I'm like, those circumstances, I had a guy, I remember I'm warming up and warming up in the back room. And this guy's smoking a cigarette watching me fight. I mean, watching me hit the mitts. And I looked at my coach, like, can we go over there? Or right. I'm, they're smoking in the arena where I'm fighting. Yeah. And, then, and then another one, I fought a girl who weighed 171 pounds. I was like, with the clothes on, I was 135 because she was coming yeah. in heavy. And I said, okay, I, was, I, I mean, I fought at 126, 122. But like, you know, I, I came up for it. And, the, and, and my manager said, oh, she's going to come in a little heavy. And then my coach was like, looking at the kilos and he's like, and he showed me. And I was like, well, shit, I came here to fight. I'm like, I don't care. So right. the, the commission, the, 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 and the Tijuana commission was like, listen, he's like, I know this girl has experience. I've never seen her fight. He goes, but you know, I don't, I can't let this go. Don't let anybody pressure you to fight. And I looked at him. I was like, no, I'm fighting. And then Haas was like, let's call Luigi. Everybody, we all had a moment. I said, okay. And then they asked me if I wanted to wear 10 ounce gloves or eight ounce gloves. So I said, well, put 10s on her and 8s on me. They're like, oh, we can't do that. I'm like, all right. But the fact that she outweighs me by, like, how many pounds does it matter? Right. So I ended up fighting in 10-ounce gloves. That would, yeah. Could you imagine if that happened today with everything? Like, come on. It would, they would never say it. They would never let it go. No, and, the, and never. they don't believe it. They had me, like, ranked. I, what is that? Like, that's so in 70. That'd be, I was like, wait, I have a screenshot of it. Because yeah. you wouldn't believe. That's the no, thing. No, you wouldn't believe it. The same I thing think, happened when I fought me and St. John. I mean, I was fighting at 126. The fight was at 135. I took it on four days notice uh, as a replacement fighter for one of my stable mates that got hurt. And I said, I don't give a shit. I'll weigh in with all my clothes on, put my keys in my pocket, put some, put some, I'm like, doing some it. stuff in my, and I think I still weighed in at like 129. I mean, and she was one like right at 135 or whatever, but which wasn't that big of a gap, but yeah. still technically it shouldn't have been sanctioned. No. So, if I would have weighed in normal, I would have been maybe 125, but I had a whole bunch of stuff in my pocket. I remember I, and I didn't understand. Cause like I was had a cell phone. I had, I'm like, is she going to be that heavy? Like how heavy is this? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, but that's well, and I knew ahead of time. Cause my coach, I mean, Sam Colonna at the time was like, you have, you can only be within, I can't remember exactly what it was, but such and such pounds. It's so like, you're going to have to leave your clothes on yeah. it was and you're going to have to put some stuff in your pocket. Yeah. I had no idea. time to gain weight. I was like four days out. So, yeah, they would never allow that stuff today. Never, never, never. Yeah. People don't even know. It was all that stuff was just really, it was really like, you know, and then like, you know, I, I think like, even like we talked about before, like even the amateurs, like I fought my second fight against a national champion who came down from 138. I was, I went up to 132 because I couldn't make weight. I was 125. I didn't know about the travel. It was in Chicago. Yeah. And I was like. So I remember Luigi is my manager. He was my coach at the time. He's like, well, we have two options. Either you, you don't fight or you go up in weight class and you fight. And before he even said that, I was like, I'm fighting. And he's like, all right, right then you're here. Yeah. And then I remember like, and, and it was like, it was, you know, and I had, I, I had one fight and I had only, I mean, I was boxing, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's just different. Yeah. And it's so different. I just, I remember like I went out there and I, I'm a fighter. Like, that's just who I am. That's always, it just, it, it is who I am. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, I'm a fighter, yeah. you know, whether it's, you know, and so I just remember going out there and I remember like, it was like mean girls because I was sitting in the, um, in before I went, before I fought, we were doing the medicals and I heard, I had my headphones on, but I had it low enough so I could hear stuff. And I heard these girls talking like, who's Maureen Shea? Cause nobody knew who I was. Like, who's Maureen Shea? Who's Maureen Shea? And I, it was my opponent looking for me. Which I, I don't understand because I never gave a shit. But anyway, so she was looking for me. Then I heard these two girls in front of me talking or behind me talking. And then all of a sudden, the doctor calls me in. I come back out. I have my headphones on. The girl taps me on the shoulder. She goes, are you Maureen Shea? I said, yeah, why? And she goes, oh, you're fighting so-and-so. I said, yeah, and? She goes, you know she's the national champion, right? I said, okay. Like, like okay. What do you want me to do? Shit my pants or leave? Like, that right. was my attitude. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, and? I can't be and, and so I just, um, I, I remember like, and I remember I went in there and I, I fought, I mean, yeah, I lost the fight, but man, did I gain a lot of experience. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, I mean, it's the same type of thing when I fought um, Janine in Michigan. Um, she never even came to the way in because she was having trouble getting over the border. Never came to the way in. And everybody was like, oh, you got to pull out. And, and I said, I, I don't care when she weighs in. If it's in the middle of the night, we need to see her weigh in. Yeah. No. Next day comes fight, like fights getting ready. And I'm like, she still hasn't weighed in. Oh, we weighed her in. Ah, uh, no, she made weight. No, no, no. I want to see her on the scale. Like you're not listening to me. Well, you know me. I mean, everybody was like, oh, we got to back out of this one. Like it's bullshit. We could smell bullshit. Like, yeah. It's yeah. bullshit. Well, yeah. I, no, I'm here. I had a whole bunch of family come to that fight because it was yeah. within five, six, seven hours of driving distance. Yeah. I was like, no, oh, we're fighting. I don't care if she weighed 150. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're fighting. Yeah. Um, didn't see her until she walked out with the ring walk and she was way bigger than me. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. She also, you know, she used to wear that, the metal knee brace. And she got me with a good body shot. I took a voluntary knee. She hit me like 10 times while I was down. Um, Should have been automatically disqualified in the first round. Oh, it's crazy. Um, didn't yeah. even lose a point. Um, need me with her brace. I got a big gash underneath my eye. That fight was totally fucked up. That's yeah, you the one that. fight that um, I, we were supposed to have an automatic rematch in the contract because she had a title. We never got the rematch. That's the one fight that really bothers me to this day still. Um, you know, because I, I never mean, got I, the opportunity for the rematch, and it was so there was so much bullshit that happened in that fight. It was pathetic. Yeah, um, and I totally got screwed. Totally got screwed. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, it went the day, and we, we we finished the fight or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, she should have been fucking disqualified. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and but I mean, it it is what it is. But yeah, there's always that one. It's it's um, it's frustrating because even when I fought for my WBC interim belt, so Jeannie Garside had the belt, but she was pregnant. And so I, so I was like, all right, so I, I got the interim belt because I won the yeah. IBF. I fought for the interim, and then I was supposed to fight my mandatory, who was Ina Mensner, but then Ina Mensner didn't want to fight me. So she I'm like, didn't want to fight me either. But why she am I fight fighting? Me. But my question is, why am I fighting for an interim belt when Jeannie was pregnant and not coming back? Right. Like, why did that happen? So I mean, literally... you have to defend every so often. So I understand she got pregnant and maybe was going to come back after the baby. But in the meantime, you have to vacate the belt and then she can come back and fight for it again. And that's, and that's, that's what they would do for the guys if they got injured or took a layoff. And so that's the thing. So I, so like that was, and then like, and then, and then I got a call. So then that fight didn't, so then my, 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 my big title fight didn't happen. So I, then they called me on two weeks notice and offered me a thousand dollars less than what I made, which was shit to yeah. fight, um, uh, Marjolina Marjanovic in Canada. I said, wait. I have the belt, but you want me to go to Canada where I'm not going to be televised so I can't even make more money when I'm a draw in Mexico, California, and New York, but you don't want that. So you know what I said to you about? Sorry. I was like, you know what? No, because I'm sitting there. You know, Sergio Martinez did the same thing. And it's not, I'm not knocking the WBC, whatever. No. It's like, it's like, you know, how I have to preserve myself. Yeah. You know, and I'm sitting there. And even now, even look at what's happening today. You yeah. know, you see, I see, and listen, these girls that are coming up, they, I got offered to fight at 130, 126. I'm like, I'm not fighting my weight class. I am one, I walk around at 130. I walk around at 130. Why am I going to fight at 126? One, I've, I've, I fought at those weights, but I'm a 122 pound, 118 pound fighter. Yeah. Like I know that now, like I grew into, like, I know my body yeah. and I've, I've learned how to make, and I make weight easy. I, I don't struggle at all. And I'm yeah. like, cause I know what to do. Because I've known for the last couple of years, but why you've been in the game job? long enough to know it, how to do it, and it's it's natural. And I, and I also did my research. I maintain. I also, you know, I work with. I work. You know, my boxing coaches have always been amazing. You know, I've worked with. Uh, you know, Hector Roca. I worked. I learned a lot with him. I, I worked with a terrific guest. I worked with Joseph Janik. Um, you know, I worked with. Uh, you know, I work with Derek Santos now. And I mean, they've all. They're all like. They're all. You know, high level. You know, elite trainers. And then my yeah. strength and conditioning coach. Now I'm with Phil DeRue, who I actually work for, but I've been with him since 2016. And I'll tell you, I've had other strength and conditioning coaches, and they're all wonderful. But the first strength and conditioning coach, any coach that ever asked yeah. me about my menstruation was Phil. I was like, wait, what? I was like, I can talk about this? Right. I, got, I was like, and I knew from that moment, I'm like, oh, God, this man is different. I was like, this guy's different. 
And I was so grateful that I realized that the important part for me was the weight room to maintain my lean body mass so that I can, you know, make the weight right. And that's why it's funny yeah. because he texted me yesterday and I told him my weight and he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm not worried about your weight. I'm like, how many fighters can you say that to? He's like right. one, <laughs> but right. you know, but I, you know, and it's like, you know, I work with him and, and his programming and it's so sports specific and it's really a science. And I'm really grateful that, you know, that uh, Daya Davis, who's a former champion, Daya was an NABF champion. He actually introduced me to Phil and I've been with Phil since 2016 and now I'm his executive assistant. He has, um, he has two gyms and he's got an online business and I work for him. So I'm like, and he's, he supports, he'll be in my corner. He was in my corner yeah. for my last fight and he works with Derek. They work very close. I'm, but I earned this. Like I, I created yeah. this. I didn't yeah. get it handed to me. Nobody no. said, oh, here's a nutritionist. My best friend's my diet coach because I've worked with her since 2014. She's not, a, she's not a nutritionist. She's not a dietitian. But guess what? What she does with me works. Yeah. And it, it, it's great. And so I st she's been with me since 2015 or 14. Plus, she's my best friend, you yeah. know? And so she knows me. And then I have, you know, I've got, a, you know, everybody that I have on my team, I put there. Yeah. And I think that that was my my manager, Luigi, who was my first, like, took me to my first amateur fight because nobody took me seriously. But he was like, he took me. He was like, okay, I'll take you to your first fight. And I was 21. And um, and he actually brought me to Hector Roca because he knew there was a level that he could take me and he needed me to, you know, that's so selfless. Yeah. You know? Who does that? No ego. No. And he said to me, anytime I made a decision, he's like, okay, this is your decision. He let me. I, I mean, he managed me, but he also shared everything. My contracts. I know everything. He taught he took me. your input. Yeah. And he, and he also, he, yes. And he also, but I also trusted him to make the, just the major decisions. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but he also, I trusted him enough because I knew he cared. And I knew that he was like, you know, we're going to do things when it's right for you. Not right. when it's about what's right for everybody else. Right. You know? And that's, and even like, it's just, it's all of it, you know? And I'm very yeah. grateful that I have him and he manages Tiara Brown. He managed Alicia Ashley as well, you know? So he's, he's wonderful. And, and I almost feel like I, I I'm just so blessed. And I, how long do you know of a, I mean, I've been with him since 21, over 20 right. years, over 20 years. I've been in a relationship with this person. You know what I mean? Like we worked together for over 20 years and yeah. I'm like, man, and it was not easy. But no. you don't just throw those away. And we've had success, self-promoted. I've never had a yeah. promoter. We yeah. did it together, Yeah. you know? And I don't think people realize nowadays because there's promoters out there and these girls that are signed and all this stuff. And there's reasons I didn't sign with promoters. You know, I couldn't fight in Mexico. Why not? I speak fluent Spanish. I'd go to Tijuana. I was on the cover of their damn newspaper. They loved me. Right. Because because I, I I'm Mexican. I mean yes I'm right. Irish but my, I'm Mexican. I'm yeah. You're very connected to both my roots. Oh right? yeah. Be who I am. Yeah. That's so. insane to me. And boxing is so big over there. Why would they not want to? Like why would you not want to have that? Because the draw will be ten times as much. Because they don't like, know how they, to do it. It's either they, they don't know how to do money. it. Well that would have made money. Like common sense. But that's the United States. That's the problem. How many how many girls are being promoted in the United States? I could count on one hand. You yeah. know, we could get into that. I mean, we've talked about that. It's like, why? Oh, it's not a draw. How the hell is it a draw in Europe, in right. England, in freaking everywhere else, in Germany, everywhere else? I mean, Regina Halmick. I mean, even, yeah. you know, I'm like, how, how is it not? How do you guys not even get this? Right. It's so frustrating that they're just like, it's like they're lazy. And I'm like, how did Dana White do it with the UFC? Right. Like, And the women are almost bigger than the men in the UFC. It, you just have to put it out there. Women's boxing, even, even back in our time, was huge overseas. Huge. huge. There was no reason that it shouldn't have been like that in the U.S. None. Whatsoever. But now people are like, oh, well, now I'm like, no, now it's being, it's being on, it's being managed by social media. Now yeah. you've got social media girls. Now you've got, I'm not, I'm not saying they're not talented, but it's like, oh, how many followers do you have? Oh, I'll promote you. Oh, well, they got their followers. I'm sorry. I'm not posing naked on my Instagram page to get followers. You don't like what I post too freaking bad. I got a full-time job. You know, I just bought my first house. I got a lot of other stuff going on, but I will still get in the ring, kick the shit out of you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's my deal. You yeah. Know? And every, I mean, everybody's different and everybody chooses their own path. And I never was real big. I mean, I had me. social media, but I was yeah. never like, oh my God, like I have to grow my followers. And it's funny because like when we got, when I started doing the show, 
Um, and I was talking with them. They're like, well, you got to like really start like pushing your social media now. So like you can to promote the show. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to work on that. Cause I never really did work on that. Cause I really didn't care. Like if you knew me, you knew me. If you didn't, you didn't, you could read about me. But you know what, but you know what it is, Brooke? It's, it's a job now. Do you know how much videographers want to follow yeah. you around with a camera? And I'm sorry, but I'm not, I'm not this person. No I'm not this person. I'm the person I had my own talk show. I, if you want to put the camera on me, I just acted in, a, in an independent film. That's being, it's a short that's being, I just, I just, people don't even know that I act. They didn't even know that I was just, I just played a lead role with an Oscar award winner as my co-star, which I, we didn't announce it. I didn't announce it yet because we have an NDA, but like, I'm not, I'm not doing all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause I don't, I'm just like, I'm in the moment. I'm in the moment and I'm, and even right. with my training, but I, I do understand. I understand the importance of sharing and things like that. You know, even my manager tells me too. He says that to me. He's like, I need you to do more of this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I'll do like, more of this when you do more of this. Yay! <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Let me let me work my job and do my Instagram. So, I mean, I'll do. I'll. That I'll is do literally a full. If you're doing social media like that, it's literally like a freaking full time job. Listen, listen. You gotta understand. I work for Phil Daru. Okay, Phil has an online business. Phil is, and he hates when I say that he's an influencer because he's more than an influencer, but his social media presence is big. He's got over 200K followers on YouTube, but he also has a full production team. Like, right. got, and so it makes sense and he's monetizing it and it's great. But like, for me, it's like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I, and I'll get to that. And if you want to bring on a production team and have it, or yeah, if you want to have them come do it for them, like they can just follow me and we can build followers like cool. But like, I don't have the time to sit down and do it myself. Because I think, like, uh, the personality is, like, we're just blunt. And we don't, people right. are like, oh, I wonder what she's going to say. Like, even in the gym today, you know what I mean? Even during my training, like, it was just funny because I was training. I was at the gym with Phil, and I, I run, I, I help him with the gym. I'm his executive assistant, so I'm running around like a lunatic. Then I got my training time, and yeah. now it's like, all right, let's go. And it's just funny because, like, different things. And I, I think people would get a kick out of it, but my main focus is the training. Well, you know? they would, and that's just because I think we're very similar in that aspect is, I always tell people like there's two sides to all of us or most of us. Um, you know, you got the, the nice, respectable, um, you know, feminine, pretty sometimes like when we want to, and then you have the hardcore like beast mode on the other side. But when we're in that mode, you don't know what's going to come out of our mouth. So <laughs> So I guess, be prepared. I always tell people like I, I cuss like a sailor if I'm in that hey, mode. Listen, so. listen, you're gonna love this. So I had gotten out of a sparring. I was sparring with Ivana Habizin, who clearly outweighs me. But but Ivana is wonderful. I love her to death. We work together. We're gonna work together in this camp. I I love working with her. You know, she knows how to work, and we both get really good work. So anyway, I just got out of the ring sparring with her, and I was approached by an individual about something. And he got loud with me. And I had just told somebody, listen, don't talk to me about that right now because I just got out of the ring. I'm a little spicy. So let's, and this individual just came at me and he was like, I was like, I don't, I mean, I went, everybody was like, and I'm like, I got it in me. I don't like to bring it out, but dude, the last thing you want to do is approach me after I just went six rounds with a girl that outweighs me by, I don't know how many pounds, by 40 yeah. pounds. And now you're coming, like, I'm still in fight mode. Like right. it was funny because- Give me time I mean, to freaking wind down first before you dude, jump on me. It was like when I was back in California, I, I remember, I remember like my, my ex-boyfriend, he wasn't a boxer. He was in, in something, he was in pest control, something totally different. But I remember like I would come home right from the gym and I would still be like kind of hot. So we would get into arguments. So I literally would have to like sit at the gym, then like drive around for a little while, go get something, <laughs> then go home because I had to like decompress. You have to, yeah, you have to wind down and like let your adrenaline and all of that stuff like settle to where you're like back to normal. I mean, I hate to say normal, like normalize it, but, no, but it's yeah, really but, true. Well, I tell people, I say, you know, I call them civilians. I'm not yeah. a civilian, you know, like it's different. Like fighters are fighters. Like whether yeah. you're in MMA, whether you're in boxing, whether you're yeah, in- It don't matter. Whether you're in bare knuckle, like we're, we're not civilians, you know? And, and people that don't recognize that and they just think like, but I think with women, it's a little bit harder, but it's, you know, I'm around a lot of MMA fighters because Phil Phil's worked with a lot of. I mean, he's worked with obviously a lot of boxers, but his big his biggest clients were Joanna Jerzejczyk, Dustin Poirier, yeah. like Frankie Edgar. Like he's worked with these high level, and he still does. He's got. Ke I mean, I can Kevin Lee. I can go over all the names, but like 
MMA fighters, for me, I connected so well with the men and the women because it was just, it's like a team atmosphere. And when I would see them holding mitts for each other, I was like, well, that's interesting because you'd never, I wouldn't hold mitts for my teammate. You know what I mean? Like you didn't. Well, they don't even usually talk to you very, very often. (laughs) It's so, I mean, certain places like the gym I'm in now. I mean, I love, I love where I'm at with Derek Santos and his, and all my teammates. I mean, they're wonderful. And I think that it was like my maturity, you know, I mean, California, I had a really good, a really good teammates. Even I was the only female when I trained now to ter- ter- terrific guest has Shadesha green. And so she yeah. just won. Yeah. So, so terrific uh, was my coach when I won the NABF title. I was the okay. first female he ever worked with. And he always said, he's like, man, he's trained other girls. Like, man, Mo, none of them are like you, but I'm so glad he's got Shadesha because I know she's a freaking, she's a beast. Yeah. And, uh, I was very her. impressed with her last fight. Yeah. And I'm he really was actually one of the best fights on that card. Yeah. And so I, I think I was so happy for terrific. Terrific was the, the guy. Yeah. He's, and I, that's my dog, man. I hit him up all the time because like, you know, he left such an impact in my life and all those guys, we trained in the basement of a house in Patterson, New Jersey, you know, yeah. Kenzel Holt was there. Like, you know, and like, I mean, Ozzy Duran was there. I mean, who else was, who else was training there? Glenn Tapia would come in. I'm talking names that people did like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. These guys, like, I still talk to a lot of these guys, you know, because yeah. I came up and they and they know the history and they respect it. They're not like all wowed by these new names because they're like, well, what have yeah. they done in the pros? These girls got five fights. They're fighting for world titles. I don't understand. I'm like, I don't understand it either. That's the big question of today. Um, I mean, we'll get into that more later on. But that's the big question of today is how all these girls with not any experience just because they're undefeated or have, or have a, a large record, social media or have a social media following getting title fights when they're not there yet. Like they're not there yet. But who are Um, they fighting for these titles? Nobody I've ever even heard of. (laughs) That's a funny thing. Um, Nobody I've ever heard of. Half the time when they're fighting, I'm like, who? They're fighting who? Who the hell is that? And where did they come from? Well, (laughs) I've never even heard that name before. Um, but, then but, like, but then they don't know who we are because they don't know they didn't do their because research. Because they don't class. fucking research. That's the we're gonna get into that more later on. <laughs> that is the one thing that perturbs that pisses me off the most. Um, which is the reason I did the show. Um, because I feel like they need educated. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Um, we're giving them a little um education um on the background <laughs> of women's boxing. Um, but I mean <sighs> I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely talk about that more towards the, the end. I'm going to bring up that. We're going to get into that discussion. Um, I do know that when you defended your IFBA title, um, it was in Mexico, but it was also pay-per-view um, on the co-main co-feature of Shane Mosley, Ricardo Mayorga main event. So that, that was in, so that wasn't, so that fight, yes, that fight was at the forum in California. That okay. Was in, in California. Yeah, that was in, yeah. That was in California. And that was, and that's another thing that was like, not noticed, like, the last woman to fight on pay per view in over a decade was Layla. Over Ali. a decade, yeah, it and was then it was over me. a decade, and it was like, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's why I brought that up. One, it was the co-feature to Shane Mosley, Ricardo Mayorga, which was a huge, huge freaking fight back in the day, mm-hmm. uh, and it was pay per view, and you were the co-main. And it was a world title, yeah, and a world title. So, um, tell everybody. I mean. That had to have been huge, like so exciting for you to get that opportunity because oh, yeah. it hadn't happened in forever. Oh, yeah. And it was not common for women to fight one as a co-main even, let alone a fucking main event. Yep. And then under that that type of atmosphere pay-per-view. Yep. Um, so did you get to work with with Shane and Mayorga? Like, are they cool down to earth people? So I mean, it some was people are, oh, some Shane's people wonderful. Are. Oh, yeah, Shane's yeah. great. And his girlfriend, who also was his wife now, she was she was part of the promotion. I mean, they were great. I mean, I did a tour with with Shane. We went to ESPN. And I think they didn't realize I spoke Spanish, so they put my ESPN in Spanish. And uh, we we did morning channels. I mean, Shane was great. You know, yeah. um, we we talked, and I, and even his son, you know, uh, Mosey Junior is wonderful. Yeah. You know, we still talk on Instagram. But like, you know, it, it, no, it was a great experience. Um, my orga was funny because so at the weigh in at the the private weigh in because um, then we did the ceremonial one in Venice Beach. So the private weigh-in, um, my, and we were like, you know, because Shane's quiet. You know, Shane doesn't, he's not a talker or nothing. So my orga was acting like a lunatic, and he had my opponent next to him, and he was telling Shane, like, oh, she's going to, you know, you want to bet on the girls, you know, you get your girl, I'll get my girl. And he was, and Shane didn't even know what was going on. So me, I speak Spanish, because my opponent spoke Spanish, and my orga spoke Spanish. So here I come, I'm like, 
and Mayorga was like, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Ellie Setback, I think, posted it on YouTube where they were like, I and have I went, watched oh. it. <laughs> I just went, oh. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, look at, look at, it's the, yeah, it, it's, I think, I don't know if it even has my, I think Ellie Setback, it might be on his, but it was so funny because I went off and I was like, and my August face, because number one, I don't think he expects me to speak Spanish. Right. And then he didn't expect me to be like, oh, hell no. Right. <laughs> so that was, that was fun. Um, I love the shock values, you know, and I'm always gonna, like, I don't, like I said, I don't need to announce when I'm in a room, but I'm definitely gonna let you know I'm in the room because I'm just right. like, you know, but, um, it was, that was probably the, that was cool. Um, being in the forum was amazing. Uh, you know, it was just, it was, it was a great experience and, you know, fighting in California, I, I, I main evented in California. I sold out, um, two places in California. So to be able to, you know, just bring people together and people like, yeah. it was funny when I fought for the IFBA title, it was in Oxnard and I was on a billboard and they did an article on me because, you know, Robert Garcia came from Oxnard, all the Garcias, the, the Vargas, Fernando Vargas, and, but none of them ever fought for a title in Oxnard. And, and they said it took a female to travel, you know, how many thousand miles. Right. To, and I thought that was cool. And listen, Oxnard, the 805, like that, that just holds such a special place in my heart. And I still go back and I talk to everybody. My family's in Florida, which is why I moved here. But man, like, I, I love California and I have, I mean, I sent you a picture, I think of me with the 805 yeah. and this is Oxnard on the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, that's, that's my second home and they embraced yeah. me. I was there for eight years, you know? So those were really cool experiences, all, all that stuff. And, um, and you know, it's still going, but yeah, yeah it, was, it was, it was great. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so kind of a little bit away where you kind of mentioned you did work with Hillary Swank, um, with million dollar baby, which I was, you're the real million dollar baby. She was just the actor. Um, <laughs> But so everybody, I'm sure probably always asks you like the experience working with her. I am hundred percent sure that you guys didn't do like full out blown sparring that you were working on stuff to teach her technique and form for the movie. Right? Yeah. Well, that's what a lot of, so that's why Hector, cause Hector Roca was contacted to work with her. And that's why Hector partnered me with her because I had full control. I mean, I spar with kids and I knew how to control my punches. So we worked on things. Yeah, of course. But it was funny. One time I had gotten head butted, head butted and I broke my nose like a couple weeks prior to that. And um, my nose wasn't completely healed. And she popped me with just a jab. But it was like the lightest jab. And my nose started gushing. And she was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And then Hector jumped in the ring. He's like, no, you don't apologize to her. And she was just like, I'll never forget that. And she just felt. I'm she like, was hey, probably this. like frozen. She thought I was going to hit her back like hard and she got like, yeah. concerned. Yeah. But we, we developed such a great relationship during that time that, you know, she really, I, I just respected her so much just as a human being coming in. And I mean, she committed to those roles. I mean, she does yeah. look at what she did with boys. Don't cry. I mean, she, I remember coming in the office and she was crying and I'm like, what's the matter? And she was frustrated. And I'm like, I was laughing at her. I was like, you're a fighter. Like, yeah, you want it like this. She was treating it like it was a fight. Like yeah. it wasn't just a movie to her. She wanted it so bad. She wanted to be so good. And, and like I said, boxing is, it teaches you it's unforgiving no matter who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, and with her, it wasn't like she was allowed to hit me as hard as she wanted and blah, blah, blah. She couldn't hit me. That was the thing. I have great defense. So yeah. She was moving and, and I so knew she just frustrated. To, yeah. But she, but you know what? She worked not just with myself. She worked with other people as well, but I, I really spent most of the time with her and then, you know, the media heard about me and my story because, you know, that's the first time, Brooke, that I talked about my abusive relationship publicly. I, I did it. I, all I knew was that when somebody asked me a question, I was always honest because yeah. I'm, I'm not a good liar and I'm just very yeah. like, this is it, you know? So when they asked me and I didn't, I, I wasn't like putting on a front, but they asked me like, how'd you get into boxing? And I was like, oh, I was in abuse. And I didn't know it was going to catch fire like that where everybody was like, oh, she's, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, you know, yes, I was in an abuse relationship. Yes, this person almost killed me. Yes, all this went on. But I didn't realize that it was like that story and how many people were rooting for me. You know what yeah. I mean? How much that and I and yeah. they were for me, they wanted me to just win in life. It wasn't yeah. just about the fight. And you That's know, it's almost I still similar have... to um the movie shit. I can't think what the name it is, but um J Lo did. Enough. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Same type of background story. Um, and then you took up boxing and then it just grew from there. Yeah. That's, and, that's so inspiring for people. Yeah. Which is why it, it blew cool. up. Yes. 
And it was funny because I, I didn't, I don't, I was in college at the time and I was training for the Golden Gloves and I didn't realize, like, I didn't audition for this. I didn't, and I dealt with a lot of hate. A lot, there was, there was people being not nice to me a lot, especially in the gym and people wanting to see me fail. And I didn't understand because I was like, but they don't even know me. Like right. I was in college. I, they didn't realize that I was struggling with depression. My father wasn't supportive of my boxing. I was trying to go to college. I was working. I was like taking trains. I was taking a bus and three trains to Brooklyn when I, yeah. when I, you know, like all this stuff that I was doing. And I remember like, I was trying to get to class cause like I had an academic scholarship that I didn't want to lose. Right. You know, like I was trying to balance all this and people just don't. And that's what I realized. I was like, people suck. Yeah. You know, like I never could be, and I've never been honestly broken. I say this with all, I've never been jealous. Like I've never been that person. Like I either don't care or I don't understand or somebody will call me out on it if I make a comment. But like, yeah. I'm happy because I believe, I firmly believe that if it's meant for me to have, God will give it to me. I, right. I believe that because I've had such amazing gifts in my life and I, and I didn't think I deserved anything. And here I am, all this is happening. And for once, like, I mean, I've been better for a long time, but now I'm like, if things aren't going great for me, I can still celebrate somebody else because I know yeah. that I know that I'm okay. I'm good because I'm always going to yeah. be good because I choose right. to be good. It's not because well, yeah, you, good you've, you've overcome that. You've overcome just, that um, hold that had it had on you to really realize that you are enough and that you are good enough and that you deserve it. Which yeah. takes a long, long, long time well, it was, to overcome. It was like, well, it was like one abusive relationship after another because I still like I went from that ex boyfriend to an abusive boxing coach to another, a verbally abusive boyfriend to abusive friends. You know what I mean? So now yeah. I can tell you right now, I got zero tolerance for that bullshit. It yeah. comes in, I'm like, see you later, bye bye. Right. I don't tolerate, or I'll say, hey, don't talk to me like that because either you're gonna be yeah. in my life or you're gonna be out of it. It's your choice. Yeah. And I'm very strong with that now. I'm very set. Yeah. My boundaries, very firm, very firm. And yeah. I have to be, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay. Yeah. Well, Those that aren't, to. aren't meant to be in my life. Yeah. And you have to. And um, I know a lot of people like that and they never overcome that um, willpower, I guess, to stand up for themselves and be like, enough is enough. Like they always. It takes a lot of work. It, a lot. A lot of work. Therapy. A lot of, man, my therapist, oh man, like I, I, I went through so many therapists and I just was just over and over again, but you know, it helped me so much to be able to, I needed somebody to just keep it real with me. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, but keep it real, but with compassion, Yeah. you know what I mean? And, and give me the tools because, or you have the tools, but I had to sharpen the tools. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> I do know you also, I mean, I'm going over all your stuff. We're going to hit everything. <laughs> um, but I, you also did commentating. I know you did commentating with Al Bernstein, boxing analyst, um, and some other um, known commentators. Yep. Tell us a little bit about your experience commentating. Did you like the commentating? Some I love like it. it. I love don't. it. Yeah. So it's funny because Christina Poncher posted something the other day. And, and you know, I don't think she knows, but it's okay. I, I was a little frustrated at first. But she posted like, oh, when she came on, there was no females on the commentating team. And I was like, hi. Like, I was... Bob Arum approached me and asked me to commentate after I fought for the WBA world title because of my pre the press conference. And I actually, the producer, the, the, he was, I want to say he was the producer, Rick, but he hit me up the other day on Twitter saying, I'm so proud of you. I was so proud of you then. Like they saw a talent in me. They gave me the opportunity. And it was funny because I, I have, it was, I commentated for, it was top ranked pay-per-view with Rich Murata and Al Bernstein. I'm the only female that's talked about in Al Bernstein's book or the only female boxer, I believe you know, that he worked with. He says he worked with me. And then, um, and it was nice because they always gave me the respect. And then um, in the ring, after I commentated, Al, um, uh, Bob Arum asked me, he's like, oh, you know, you did a great job. And he's like, are you, like, he wanted me to quit boxing. To do commentating. And I said, no. And guess I what? Mean, I be like, no, I'll do it on the, like, when I have time. But or... that's not what they wanted. No. Me, listen, I went into his office when I, when I got on that card. And people don't realize, uh, nobody helped me get on that card. I got on that card. I met, so the whole story, I'll give you the background real quick. So I went, and as an amateur, I, after the Million Dollar Baby, I was an amateur when I worked on the movie. So I went to this event. It was a cop event. It was like, I think it was the police. It was like the police versus the firefighters, I think. I don't remember, but it was like a fundraiser. So I was invited. And background story, uh, they wanted to recruit me for the NYPD boxing team. But I wanted to go pro. So if I became a cop, my dad was retired. And my godfather, and even my manager's retired. If I would have became a cop, I couldn't be a pro boxer, so I chose not to do it. 
Um, but I, I was invited to this event and I went and I was with my dad and I went and I sat, I remember they said, oh, Maureen, sit wherever you want. So at the VIP table. So I picked a table. It was like nice older gentleman. And I said, okay, I'm going to sit here. I'm comfortable. And I started talking to this, this man, this, this man and his name's Warren Flagg. And so we started talking and he's like, you know, I didn't tell him who I was. I didn't really tell him too much about what I did or anything like that. But I told him I boxed and it's like, oh, those cute girl boxes. And then they announced all these fighters into the ring. And I was sitting there and I was like, oh, cool. And then they said, we have a special guest here tonight. She's, and they named all my accomplishments and they call me in the ring. And then when I'm getting out, I'm signing autographs and all this stuff. And then I sat at the table and the guy was like, why didn't you tell me who you were? And I was like, I don't, cause I just wasn't like that, you know? Yeah. So he, so he goes and calls Murad Muhammad. If you know Murad Muhammad and found him, yeah. he, down, he had his promotional company and he calls Murad and he puts me on the phone with Murad and Murad, I don't know what he said to him. Murad was like, He's like, young lady, when you turn professional, you give me a call. I said, okay. So fast forward, I don't know how many years later, I stayed in touch with Warren. I get, I have a meeting with Murad Muhammad and my manager. So we have the meeting and he put me on the undercard of, of, uh, Evander Holyfield and Fresno Kendo. And so that was a great, and the Alamo Dome. Yeah. So that was that experience. And then Warren connects me with Bob Arum and he's like, you know, he spoke to Bob Arum and he said, listen, just give this girl a shot. I walked into, so I had a meeting with him and I came with my portfolio with, with my manager, Luigi came and it was my pictures, my resume, everything. I had my CDs of my fights and I went in and I sat down and he was like, listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm not really impressed with women's I boxing. With women. And then he was like, I, I lost a lot of money with Lucia Riker and Christy Martin and blah, 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 blah. I said, Bob, I said, Bob, with all due respect, I'm not Lucia Riker or Christy Martin. My name is Maureen Shea. I yeah. said, and I'm going to explain to you who I am and why you should put me on. And I gave him this whole thing. He never even opened the envelope. He said, okay. He, I just sold him on it. And I think he was impressed with my confidence and my, just my, like, you got to be kidding me. Like, I don't care yeah. about these other girls. Like, no disrespect. I love Chris right. And I love Lucy. Like, I'm not, I'm not. But it's like, I don't want to be compared. I'm different. I'm yeah. me. You know? Right. And so that happened. And, um, and then he gave me the opportunity. And unfortunately, Hector went with another fighter. Uh, to another country because he got I, whether whatever the reason was. I mean, I think it was money, and, and and you know, God rest his soul. Hector recently passed away, um, but you know, he went to another country with another fighter, and and I fought for my first world title by myself, with no coach in my corner. And I I, I dropped her in the first round, and then I blew my eardrum in the fourth round or the fifth round, and I went on to lose the fight, and that was my opportunity. Bob Arum would assign me. Yeah. And I lost the opportunity and, and, you know, but it's okay. You know why? Because, and that was on Miguel Cotto's undercard and that was huge. I have a picture of me and Miguel and, 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 you know, everybody that was on the card and actually, uh, um, uh, one of the, one of the fighters, um, Matt Bay, Matt, what's Matt Bay's last name? I don't remember his last name, but I was just in the gym with him yesterday cause he's here in Florida and he's like, we're so young in that picture. And I, you know, he, I mean, you know, yeah. Korobov, Korobov. Yeah, Matt Korobov. and I mean, that just absolutely sucks that you had to lose that opportunity just because of the circumstances surrounding, totally out of your control. Nothing you can do about the circumstances. Um, and Bob Arum has always been flat out no to women's boxing. I mean, he has not made it a secret. He's but made then, it very but it was, public. But it was after that fight that he brought me on to commentate. But he wanted to entice me with a commentating opportunity to quit boxing and I, I stayed true to who I am and yeah. I said and yeah, no. you know, I lost an opportunity but you know what but like I mean listen I know that I'm a good commentator I've done I worked like I said with and I can they vouch for me Alwood and Richwood and you know even top rank when when I actually sent out my my information to them when um they had Christina Poncher was on was on leave and so I put my stuff right in you know but yeah. then they were like oh we're bringing her back or whatever you know and I'm like okay but now I see they're giving these young girls opportunities you know, and again, I would like the opportunity because I got so much, just, I got so much experience and so much, my boxing IQ is so high. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm confident in that. Like, I'm like, hey, listen, you know, you want to sit down yeah. and watch a fight? We can do it. I know There's we'll so that. many of us from the, it's frustrating because yeah, when I retired, that's what I wanted to do was commentating. Um, but I just, I didn't have the connections and I didn't, you know, I just didn't have the connections basically is what the it's, a lot of that is that a lot of it is the connections but back then it was more like you can't fight and commentate yeah 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 i mean that makes sense but yeah i mean when i was done you know i was like god what am i going to do now like i still want to do something with boxing but like i don't have the means to like really coach because i can't afford a gym because they're 
fucking expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so I'm like, let's do commentating. But I just didn't know the right people to connect, to connect, to that, and it just didn't work out. But it kills me today, like you said, the girls that are like the that are commentating now are like, oh, we're like we're the first ones ever. No, we've done it before. And it just not, wasn't like frequently every fight. I'm not, we listen, doing it. And for me, I'm very happy with these young girls. I'm congratulations, but I just and again, it's not that I'm hating. Like that's why I'd be like, oh, you're hating. I'm like, no, I I if I don't speak up and tell you the, the facts that are missing, who is? Right. Gonna, you know what? I love that I'm underestimated now. I love that I walk in a room, people don't know anything about me. I'm totally fine with that because you know what? I know me. I don't need the fanfare. I don't need this. I don't need any of that. I just come in yeah. and I will just I just do my well, job. I also feel like aside from not knowing anything about boxing history all the way back to the past, they don't even know they don't know even about the previous generation. Um, but like I tell everybody all the time if you want to know anything about anybody in women's boxing go to go to wban wban.com okay sue fox um you yes. can follow her on any social media platform or she has a website and you can learn literally about any fighter on there yeah um, past or present or coming up they're all yep. there um yep just do your research i mean that's all but it I, really I feel- is but that's but it but that's what the social media era is now. It's if it's not right here in front of me, I'm not going to look. For yeah, it. I'm not going to put I'm forth the effort to look, mm-hmm. unless. But you know what I like? I like that. I like that. I like that a lot of my fights weren't televised, and there's yeah, very few. But mine were never. And I, I like mean, now that. But now that anybody that wants to see me fight, go ahead, go do your research. I'm going to do mine because I'm going to see all your fights right in front of my face. And you're going to see like. Five of mine from like six yeah. years ago when I'm a yeah. completely different fighter now. And that's the funny thing. Um, I just started posting because I never posted my fights. And anytime somebody would post one of my fights on YouTube, I would contact whoever posted it and say, that's me. I didn't give you permission. Take it out. Yeah. Because I didn't want people to study me. I didn't want yeah. there to be any footage of me anywhere, like at all. Yeah. Um, and I did very well with that. So I've just recently yeah. started posting some of my fights on my YouTube yeah. page. Um, but you couldn't find, you couldn't look me up back then and find anything. You might find it's like not. a clip or two or, but like, um, but it was like, but even like everybody is like, Oh, do you study your opponents? I'm like, yeah. How, like back then I'm like, yeah. How many tapes do you think I could find? You couldn't. Not very often. How good we, well, think about how good we are at adjusting it the first round. Cause yeah. what are we going to do? Listen, I fought when I fought for the IBF world title when I fought on the Shane Mosley card. I had no idea Yuli Han Luna was freaking five seven because I couldn't find her freaking height anywhere. So <laughs> right. I, we had to, we had to change the fight because I was planning yeah. on I was planning on okay she's Mexican she's gonna come forward she boxed me she ran the whole time I didn't yeah. know her reach I didn't know anything. Yeah, so it, was you, like, it, it was hard. It was so much harder than me because you just didn't know crap. You didn't know crap. Or well, um, these girls that are coming from other countries that, you know, especially in Mexico, I mean, you don't know. Yeah. I didn't know. Like I said, did I know the girl was going to be 170 pounds? No. Yeah. No. No. You just, no. It was very, very we hard. Can laugh. I laugh now. I think it's hysterical because, listen, I overcame all that. But you know what's funny? I feel like the public, it's not even the public's fault that I feel like it's our responsibility to educate them. But it's yeah. also like they thought women's boxing started with the Olympics. I'm like, no. I'm like, women's boxing was around way before the Olympics. Way and, before the Olympics. And I'm like, I wasn't in the Olympics. Why do you think I was in the Olympics? Because I turned pro in 2005. And what was women's boxing? 2012? Yeah. Was the Olympics? I'm like. We wouldn't have had a pro career at all if we had waited on the Olympics. Like, exactly. come on. It wasn't, even, it wasn't even in the near future optional like they weren't even talking about it being a thing yet when i when i fought when i fought for i forgot it was what what tournament it was but i went to colorado and i was with like angel bovi you remember angel she she was amateur yeah so i remember i was with her i'm trying to think of the other names but we were all out there and we all had to stay in a hotel because we weren't allowed to stay on the olympic training center yeah you couldn't women weren't allowed and we i remember that i went and i had to blend and cook my food in my room we had to rent a car we had to pay for it our own selves. Yeah. And it was like we paid our own ways to get to tournaments and we couldn't even Yeah, stay because there. women just women couldn't be on the pro- you could only fight on the premises. Oh, Melissa. You couldn't stay on the premises. There you go. Mel- Melissa Smith. Melissa, preach. Melissa's all about that. Melissa Smith from New York. She just said, uh, never mind all the women that boxed in the nineteen seventies. Yeah. Right. It's crazy. I'm saying they came way before our time. 
Like when we started, they were way before us. Yeah, Barbara uh, but Bunch we used to talk about the them. Place. We used to talk about those. Um, they just don't do that anymore. Um, you also, though, were on the TV show Made as a coach. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you also were nominated by them for um, the coach. coach toughest award, right? coach. Yeah, it was Toughest Made Coach. Toughest Made yeah. Coach. So, and you um, prepared a girl that was a new fighter for six weeks for her first amateur. No, she wasn't. Right? Let, me, let me get this straight. She was wasn't not a fighter. New? She was a ballerina. Okay, okay. a ballerina. She was a high school senior, Whitley Miller, who I still, I still speak to today, who I love to death. I, she became my family because um, we went through some hell together. So we were in Jackson, Tennessee for six weeks. I had six weeks to train her to be, to fight an amateur fight. And yeah. I actually follow her and Christian. Christian was the girl that she fought. I still talk to them on Instagram. And they're both beautiful. And they're not boxing anymore. But I think Christian's got a baby. Uh, Whitley's got her yoga studio. It's I love it. But anyway, so yeah. So she, I showed up. And I'm like... I'm in, I'm in like, it's like the middle of like the Bible belt and I'm this loud Bronx, you know, and they, everybody there is like, who is this person? I got cameras following me and everything. And so, um, yeah, she was a ballerina in high school and wanted to be made, made into a boxer. And so, um, it was a great, it was a great experience, but it was tough because I'm like, I, it's funny the, the, I don't even know if they still on, if it's online anymore, but it was funny because she showed up late for our first training session. And I was in the ring sparring because I wanted her to walk in and see me sparring with a guy and yeah. see that we were working. And I wanted to see if she could tell if they, who was who, you know? Yeah. So she, and the, the producer was like, they came up to me on camera like, oh, so she's not here. What are you going to have her do? I was like, oh, I'm sending her home. They put the camera down. They're like, oh, you can't do that. I'm like, why? Oh, well, we need footage. I said, listen, this girl's going to be, tr she's fighting an amateur. She's getting punched in the face in six weeks. She's never been hit before. I said, this is, this is her life in my hands. I said, if yeah. you don't like how I'm going to do this, you could give me back. I'll give you back your check. You can, we can go. You yeah. Know? And then she was, and then they, they just looked at me and they were just like, okay. So they let me do it my way. So she showed yeah. up. I sent her home. She cried. I don't give a shit, but you know what? You were late. Like, this is serious. Listen, I had a coach when I was five minutes late with my bus and three trains, put my, my gear in a garbage bag and leave it at the door. Yeah. Okay. So now that's it. So now it's like, so now here I am, you know, you know, doing this with her and I just love to see her grow. It was just a beautiful, ex and I got to meet her family and everybody. And then when she fought, man, I remember in the, I was crying. I think I felt more in that fight than I did with any of my fights. Right. Because I was like, I was like, you did it. Because well, like, you, you made her, like you made her. It was our relationship. And the fact that she didn't, I mean, she was puking. It was great. Like she was like, she's like, I got to wear a diaper. I'm like, this isn't a diaper. It's a foul protector. Then I remember this one girl came and sparred her and punched her in the face. And she looked at me. She's like, oh, hell no. I was like, what do you mean? No. What are you doing? You signed up for there this. There is no timeout in boxing. There's no timeout. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Did she continue to fight after that? Or was that her only fight? No, that was her only fight. Yeah. Okay. She's still trained. She came, So when she graduated high school, she came to visit me in California. And she stayed with me. And we hung out. And she boxed a little bit with Haas. She hit the mitt. She had good form. And then, um, uh, and then when she graduated college, she came and visited me in New York. Okay. And nice. we still talk today. Like we still, nice. I, I love seeing, she's doing great things. She's doing yoga, yoga bar stuff. She's, I love that she's still physical. She's still fit. Yeah. She's, still doing, she's doing something, something. And, Just, yeah. Yeah. and so Christian, so I think Christian, her opponent, um, I think Christian went on to box a little bit more, but then now she has a family. So, yeah. Don't we all, I mean, it happens. It happens eventually. Something happens. Um, DVOP's team, thank you for joining us. So why should boxing today be any different than every other sport? All other sports have public footage. I don't get why boxing thinks they can hide their past or their training or think tennis. Do you mean, I mean like us? You mean like us like not posting our footage or having our footage posted? I mean, about? I don't think it matters. I mean, I don't publicly post my footage. Just, I don't think it's necessary. But if my footage is out there, it's out there. What's out there can stay out there. But what yeah. I'm going to offer, I mean, but then again, you know how I think about it now, honestly, Brooke, like you can see whatever you want to see. Like you, you don't, who's going to show up on fight day? What's going to show up on fight day? You don't know what I'm working on. Yeah. I mean, no. obviously you're not going to see my full camp and see everything that I'm working on. Cause that's just stupid. It's right. Nobody's going to do that. They're not punching each other in the face in tennis. 
Like no. it's a little different. We've got our lives on the line. Yeah. So I could see why people would be a little bit like, you know, but I, I understand, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I mean, comparing it to tennis is a little different, but yeah, I mean, it's fine, but I'm not going to just put my stuff out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because not going like, to volunteer well, it. Yeah. Listen, yeah, we're not going to like here, volunteer and be like, here you go. But yeah, 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 it's totally different because every single fight is different. Boxers and promoters hide their videos. Um, I mean, I flat out just told you, I, I didn't let my footage be out there because I didn't want people to study me. Why give them the advantage? I wasn't studying them because most of my fighters, a lot of my fighters didn't have footage or if they did, it was old fights. Fighters develop over time and they're, they never fight this. Well, most of them don't fight exactly the same in every single fight. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's, I think it's, there's, there's a level MMA puts it out there. Well, MMA, I mean, but that's different. We, it's a different sport. I mean, MMA has got, you know, you, you really know what the strengths are, but styles, it's a little different because there's way more styles or way more arsenal in, in MMA, you know? Yes, that's true, Melissa. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of women don't yeah, have a lot control. of women don't have control. I think that, I mean, but I'm not gonna. I, I mean, MMA. For, I mean, I'm not gonna put my stuff out there just to put it out there. You know, just yeah. Like, oh, I mean, I mean stuff on there. I, I put some stuff out there. I'm not gonna put my sparring videos out there because those are my sparring videos. Like, I don't. Yeah, that's what you're working on, uh, Melissa. That's a very, very good point, though, Melissa. A lot of women don't have control over the footage, um, and the fights are not broadcast, especially back in our time. Um, and like I said, I wasn't going to voluntarily put my foot fights out there that I personally recorded. But I mean, there was still clips of me out there on YouTube and stuff like that, that other people had posted, but it was clips. It wasn't like the full fight. But if um, it's a fight, like if it's a fight that's been televised, like I think one of my fights, my fight with um, Kina's out there, my fight with Yuli Han's out there and they recorded it because it was on TV. They were yeah. On <laughs> like, well, that's going to be out there regardless. You don't have a choice. It's not like you can tell yeah, them because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was broadcast. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's different. Yeah. yeah, totally different. Um, you also did, though, have your own show, um, Shay's Corner on BronxNet yeah. TV. Um, yeah. tell everybody, I mean, obviously, you're not still doing that now, I don't believe. But no, tell that was no, about I'm, that. No, uh, so I did that. So, that was with a local Bronx network. Um, and I, I actually I started with I had that, so it was it was it was a it was a live show. And I went around the community and I interviewed people. I had Alicia Ashley on my show. So it wasn't just boxing. I also did some commentating with Gary Axelback, uh, ringside in the Bronx. We did some shows and, and I ran Barkley was there. It was a great event. And, um, I did so many things. I had a pot, I had a, a pot. Well, it was a podcast back then. It was called breathe boxing radio. And that was with Nate Campbell and uh, Nate Campbell Nate, and, and Tim Kudges. Yeah. yeah. Nate went with me to, he was with me. Um, him and Chevelle Hallback were with yeah. me in, Mexico when I fought Mia. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And so, um, and so, yeah, so Nate and I had a show. It was, it was, it was a pisser. We laughed. I said, Nato said, you're, you're the only white woman I'd ever marry. <laughs> that's what Nate <laughs> I said, that's nice, Nate, but I'd never marry you because I'd kill you. <laughs> right. No, we, I love him. I mean, he's a tough one, but I love him to death. But then, um, um, so yeah, so I did that with him and then, um, yeah, I commentated. I've done a lot. Of, and then I had a podcast called the Canvas Podcast when I was here in Florida with Jessica Aguilar who was on in the U.S. She was a UFC fighter. And we went back and forth studying the fights with MMA and the UFC, the UFC and with MMA, all, all the Bellator, all the MMA um, uh, promotions and boxing, obviously. And then we had some, we had some great guests. I had Alicia on that show too. I had Amory, Amory Saccarato on that show too. Amory actually. Yeah, Amory. Yeah. She's supposed to yeah. be on the show later too. So is yeah. Alicia Ashley. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did promotions. Yeah. Yes, Melissa. Thank you. I did promote, I had Pandora promotions. And I did Alicia's first main event in Brooklyn. <laughs> See, Melissa, man, you're awesome. Go, Melissa. Melissa, I did, I did. <laughs> Melissa knows her stuff. Melissa knows her stuff. It was Alicia Ashley's first main event at the Brooklyn Masonic Temple. And I promoted the show and I was out there doing that. And then, um, yeah, I also, I worked with Global Boxing Promotions and I co-promoted uh, with them. And then I commentated those shows. And, man, I did a lot. It's just crazy. Anything else, Melissa? Am I missing anything? <laughs> Um, that was a great fight. That was a great yeah. fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It was. Yes, Crystal, Crystal Hoy. Crystal, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Crystal then Hoy. I did. I did. I um. I was a. I was a um. A, a host for a, a show in Mexico called um Retos uh, Retos de Campeones. So it was. It was like about. It was female boxing team. It was eight female boxers from the from all over the world against eight female boxers from Mexico. And that wasn't really public here in the United States, but I, I, I was a, I was a host for that. 
So that was really cool. So and that was in yeah. Spanish. So that was fun. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I did some awesome. ESP. I did some ESPN commentating. God, Melissa, you're making me look bad. With I thought I had researched <laughs> everything there is to know about her, but I missed the promoting. There's so many. I know. I forget. I forget. I'm like, oh, I I'm missed so the good. promoting. I managed. Uh, but I no, thank you for pointing that out. Thank you for pointing that out. Was fire, was fire on, on in that one? Yes. yes yeah, I think she was. was yeah. In Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, so I think, I mean, I think we pr pretty much covered a lot of, of her um, highlight reel. We'll put it as a <laughs> highlight reel. Um, but at the age of 42, you're still out there going strong and young taking these youngins to school, um, taking the school and these rookies out here. Yep. Um, do you have anything in the works or be fighting hopefully in the near future? I do. I do. So I just recently signed a contract and um, Eddie Hearn spoke about it on social media. So I'm sure you'll be getting that news quite soon, but um, you know, I'm, I'm in camp and I'm, I'm excited and, and you know, it's time, it's time. So some things, some things are happening. So, yeah, uh, good. Cause I mean, you if they don't know, they're going to know. If they don't yeah. know, they're going to know. If they don't <laughs> know, should, they're about to know. Come, I should come out to Biggie. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Because if yeah. you don't know about it, you're about to know real quick. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, that's awesome. That's what I'm yeah, I'm, I'm excited yeah, about it. I feel really good. I um, I'm happy. I mean, you know, as far as everything else, I mean, I have a great life. I just bought, I just bought a, my my first home. I'm I'm really happy about that. I'm, you know, I love it. I I live out here in South Florida now. I'm very close. My my father passed away two years ago, so I'm oh, I'm, I'm here with my mother. Thank you. You know, I'm here with my mother and and my brother and his family. And and I love my job. I work for like I said for Phil Drew and Drew Strong Performance, and I train with tech with the Derek Santos and um. You know, I'm, I'm really blessed. I have I have a wonderful little Dotson poodle here, Chorizo, my dog. <laughs> it's nice, my nice. You gotta have a dog. You gotta have a dog. I have to. I have to. He keeps me sane. Um, yeah. So, I mean, big question here. Um, aside from obviously your next fight, is there anybody mm -hmm. before you hang them up that you want, like that you are looking at and want to accomplish? Anything like, who do you want to call out? Like, who is you got to have this fighter before you go? I don't know. I don't even, I just want, you know, here's the thing for me right now. I've never called anybody out because I, I don't even care for me. I have an accomplishment. What I want to do, what I'll say this, what I want to do is I want to unify at 122. Yes. That's what there I want to do. If that, if yeah. that's a, whoever's got the belts, because whoever's got the belt, because, that's who you want. You know? Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's all really of them. That's really what I like. That's my goal. That's my goal is to unify at 122. That's my weight class. That's where you know, I said 118, 122, and those are my, those are my goals and it's, yeah. it's super attainable. And I'm like, you know, and again, like, I feel like sometimes I get counted out because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 42 or are they counting me out because I have 34 fights, Both. you know, is that the problem? You know what I mean? Chanel like, Hallback has the same problem. I mean, she's older, but yeah. uh, older than you, but same thing. It's because the amount of fights that she has, the experience that she has, um, the talent that she has, and because she's older, I mean, I flat out, have, I mean, have people have asked fighters about fighting her and them and their coach are like, why? She's, oh, like, I had, oh, listen, she's past her prime. Like, why? I had a, I had a, um, I had a matchmaker tell me that I'm the hardest female to match in boxing. It is probably true. I didn't believe I my manager today, first. You I Bell, but cannot get fights. Yeah. Because of one, your age, they always say, oh, well, they're too old. Like, what's the point? Well, because they can still whoop your ass. That's the point. But like, One. I haven't lost a fight since 2009. Like I'm perfectly, and I just fought, I just fought. You just fought last year. And then four, and I wasn't out for two and a half years. I wasn't out because I didn't want to fight. No. I was ranked number one by the WBA. And then all of a sudden I disappeared from the rankings. Because you couldn't get a fight because nobody would fight you. So they just banished me from the rankings. Yes. I, just, bridges. I know. Listen, Melissa. <laughs> Whatever, like I, 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 whatever, whoever, anybody's got a belt, you know, anybody that's got belts at 118 or 122. 122. I'm so like, please, please, because it's like, what's the problem? Well, hopefully, after this fight that you have coming up, yeah, that's gonna open up doors for people to be like, you know what, yeah. she's still at the top of her game, she is still a threat. She, but I think, but I she think should be mandatory. But I feel like that's the problem. You know what I mean? Like I feel like they they know I'm a threat. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. Well, they do, but 
if it opens up enough doors to get you ranked high enough, well, they you're going to be mandatory. The they have to. They have to. Let's just say. Let's just say. It no, has to I'm, be a forced fight. Just let's. Just, that's right. That's right. It has to be a mandatory forced fight. That's right. And hopefully, this fight will be good enough to get you to that point. That's right, my girl. That's that's my girl. You know, <laughs> I know. You know, I know. I've been there. Darling. I know. You know. You, they don't know, but you know. I know. Y'all don't I know. It. I mean, we're talking to you that y'all might not know, but we know. Like, it's yeah. got to be forced. Yes. Um, same thing with Johnson, Bridges. Yeah, all of them will be fabulous fights for her. Um, but they're going to have to be forced because they are 100% not going to take that voluntarily. Yep. No way. Mm -hmm. um, so overall goal, how much, I mean, are you, and that's the goal you're fighting until then? Or do you have like a cutoff point where you're like, at this age, I'm done? Um, I said 43, but I have my goal that I want to accomplish. So it's between the goal and 43, <laughs> okay. but it's the goal. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's the goal, you know? So, yeah. and I understand how this all works, but, but that's really it because like, again, I'm not doing this for any other reason, but you know what I'm, what I'm, you know, I, I have my goals. Like, yeah, I don't care. I have so many other things. That's happening your bucket right list. Now. We got to get, we got to get undisputed. That's right. That's right. Before that will be, that will be, that will be coming out soon, Melissa. It'll be um, announced yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. She'll announce that'll be announced soon. It may be, um, if you might be able to look it up by now, since he's already talked about it, but otherwise, if not soon, yeah, we'll know soon. I don't even know Melissa. Well, he literally talks about it for two seconds. Cause I'm not the priority of the conversation. It's this person fighting somebody else. So they just completely oh. bypass me, but that's okay. I'm used to it. Uh, it well, it's going to be announced shortly. Yeah. Shortly. We'll know. Everybody will know. The world will know that she's coming. Ah, oh, the ass. Yes, thing. exactly. Ah, the ass <laughs> thing. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. Um, yep. So speaking of the today's boxing, what are your thoughts on the women boxers of today? Oh, I think, um, listen, I love, I mean, I think they're, they're, they're really coming up. I think there's a lot of talent out there. Um, I still think that there's, you know, like I said, the seasoned vets, there's still girls that have put in the time. And these, I think a lot of these younger girls, what I see is that they have, not they have a lot of amateur fights so they're still kind of fighting an amateur style in the pros yeah so i feel like they're coming along you know now with their styles like sometimes it works but sometimes it doesn't work yeah. you know um so i think that it's nice to see the development now but i think that people need to understand amateur boxing and professional boxing are very different they're yes. significantly different very. and um you know i don't think people recognize that you know so that's why i think like myself i learned on the job you know, and you did too, you know, so yes. it's the same thing. We didn't have the amateur experience. So we weren't stuck in that style where with the pro style and the angles and right. the different movement, I think, I, I feel like there should be, I think, you know, I pride myself on defense. I'm a very defensive minded fighter. I, I feel, I, I said this to, um, uh, I said it to, uh, what's his name? Oh my God. Um, I, I just, I just had this conversation the other day with Antonio Tarver. I said to him, I was like, listen, I said, Antonio, I'll bet money that you can't find a girl that moves like me. I said, there's not one female out there that has my style, which I pride myself on because they should. I mean, everybody's got their own style, but I know my style. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I wish I would see, I think, you know, I wish I would see more, more head movement. I yeah. think girls are just taking too many punches and I feel like they need to have more head movement and work defense a little bit more, which is like I said, I pride myself on that. Um, yeah. So I'd like to see that kind of evolve a bit more with the defense. Yeah, I agree with that. Good points. Good points. Um, is it going to be on the zone? Oh, I don't know. We don't know Go yet, fun. Melissa. We don't know. Um, how many championship belts have you? She's had four, right? Yeah, four. Two world title and yeah, two, two. Four belts. belts. Thanks, D for uh D Garcia for joining us again tonight. And yes, yeah, she's had four belts. Ramla Ali is developing nicely. Yes, she is. I would agree with that. I saw I saw her. Fight. I, mean, I was more impressed with Green. The one oh, we were she, Yeah, she did she, yeah. Well she got yeah. I got she got she got my dog terrific gist in her corner, so <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna she, a, that last card, I think she was the one that stuck out to me the most. Yeah, Ramla, Ramla Ali fought um, Avril Mathis. Ramla did, she did good too. But she, but she also fought a, a, a girl that's not her weight class. So, yes. You know, these girls, these girls are calling out girls that aren't in their weight class. Yes. You know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, Avril, Avril's a good fighter and it was a great yeah. experience for Avril, but Avril also doesn't have that experience. And I mean, Ramla Ali is my weight class. Just yeah. saying. But, um, you know, Avril Mathy is a 118 pounder and has, you know, has, has, you know, she's developing too, you know, and, and she's great. Avril's come such a long way. Like I said, I'm in the gym with her. I, I love her energy. I love her. She's given me tons of rounds and I'm so grateful for her. Christina Cruz, another sparring partner of mine. I work with, um, you know, with, with Evelyn Romo, who's a, who's an amateur 
you know, we've gotten some rounds in and, and, you know, I, like I said, Ivana have is in, yeah. I mean, I get some great, I get some great work out here and I'm, I'm really, I'm, I actually sparred with Britain Hart, the bare knuckle fighter as well. You know, that was nice. a lot of fun in there mixing nice. it up with her. I love Britain. I just love, I love that girl. She's just got some spirit, man. But, well, um, but yeah. Rama had a punctured lung in that fight. I didn't know that. I guess I didn't oh, read wow. about that. Wow. But wow. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. That's, that, that takes a lot of courage to do that. Um, and it had to be hard. Um, so do you have any of like favorite up and coming fighters or fighters that you just really don't like their charisma or style? Um, I mean, no, I mean, there's not, not, not many that I really don't like, um, man, it's so hard. I just, I, I mean, I watch the girls and I just kind of, I just see the more of the development. Like I'm, I guess, um, I got, it's, it's hard cause I'm still in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like for me to right. It's not like you're like, oh shoot. Well, who do you like today? Well, I'm still in today, so I like myself. Yeah. So it's hard, but like, I mean, if I see, you know, I'm trying to think of. I mean, I don't or know. Or somebody that like stands out to you or impresses you. And I mean, I mean, if you had one, it would probably come right to your. To yeah. Your brain. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, for sure. So, um, oh, I always ask everybody, um, and and I always punctuate the what were your female because otherwise they'll give you male uh female role models or women you looked up to prior to you alicia ashley i gotta tell you alicia for me and christy martin of course i mean yeah. i remember sitting with christy and christy and i became friends and and you know we we, we text message and christy christy and i shared you know similar stories you know yeah. so we talked about abuse and we talked about all of that and and i, I love christy so much but man like and I think Alicia is one of those people that people need to know who she is. And mm -hmm. I had the, I had, I was so fortunate to work with her as an amateur and I was so fortunate to just, she watched me grow up, literally yeah. watched me grow up. She was with me from the age of 21, you know, yeah. till now. So, you know, to have somebody like her and to be, I mean, I remember I walked her out after I fought in Mexico, I walked her out to the ring carrying her belt, you know, yeah. and I, I was so proud to do that. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't just do that for anybody because I've said this before. I don't support you just because you got a vagina. Sorry. I right. Don't. You know what I mean? Right. Like I'm that person that you really have to, you know, I really have to feel something for you. You yeah. know, I really connect like that with you. But, exactly. um, you know, I, I have to say that Alicia has been, has such an impact on my life personally that she's, I mean, she's, and her style, I mean, effortless. I mean, I, yeah. I, mean, I tried to match, her, to, to copy that movement. I mean, she's beautiful. Yeah. She, she yeah. boxes, she, she beautiful. And, but you know what it is? It's, it's everything about her, 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 just her presence, you know, training with her, even sparring with her. I mean, she called me with a body shot one time. It was so effortless. I couldn't even breathe. <laughs> it was a straight right to the, it was a, no, was it? Yeah. She was a southpaw. It was a straight left to the body. I was like, Ugh! and I was like, Meh. but she was so graceful in how she worked yeah. with me because she clearly, I was just like, okay. There's only two people that ever, ever stung me with a body shot like that. Alicia Ashley and a male fighter. <laughs> and he didn't do it on purpose. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, speaking of Alicia, I mean, I fought her in New York. Were you at that fight? Where in New York? Oh, I'm trying to think. It, I think it was 2008, maybe. Um, it was a WBC title. Um, I know Melissa Hernandez was there um, because I talked to her in the dressing room. Um, God, what? Shit, I have to look it up. Where was it? Let me see. I'll tell you. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. I think it was 2008, and it was a WBC. It was 118 pounds, which was a problem for me. I thought it wouldn't be, but it was. Yeah. Um, I fought her. Yeah, 2008, and it was at the Paradise Theater. I the did. I fight on that card. No, I didn't. Did I fight on that card? Did you? I don't think so because I would have met you. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't think we ever met in person. I mean, you might have been at the fight, but I don't think we ever actually Maybe met. Maybe I wasn't in person, the fight. We? God, I don't remember. I mean, 2008 because I fought at the Paradise Theater too, and I moved to California in 2010 or 11. Hold on, I have yours pulled up too. You fought in 2008, but I don't think it was. You no, you fought. That was in January 2008. You fought in September 2008. Oh okay, okay. So, but I thought maybe you were at the fight. Anyways, yeah, that fight, um, I was fighting at Featherweight and I got the call to fight her at 122. I think it was 122. Oh, 118, you said. 
I think it was 122 actually. Because I was like, oh, four pounds, no problem. I didn't have four pounds oh. like to come off. Um, so I made weight, but I was like, it took everything out of me to make weight. Like I couldn't eat, like I wasn't drinking water. It, it was jacked up. Um, and I didn't have enough time to recover. Um, but yes, um, I feel like it was, it was definitely a good fight. And I feel like it would have been a whole different fight had it been at 126 versus 122 with the weight loss. But yeah, her movement is, is one of a kind. It's, it's so unpredictable, different. very unpredictable, which is what I, I really yeah. appreciate. I'm more, you know what it is? I think what is the reason I, I just a lot, I think what the problem I'm having, because there's a lot of talented females out there. I think the problem I'm having is I don't quite think some of these females have developed their style yet because they're still young in the game. Does that yeah. make sense? I yes. feel like for me, I developed my style. So I feel like these girls coming up, it's hard for me to look at a girl who's got like seven fights and be like, oh yeah, I'm like, she hasn't developed yet. So it would be yes. like, that's where it is. I mean, I could see some stuff, but I'm also like, all right, let's, you know, let's, I mean, if I was looking at them right now and watching it, I say, okay, I could see this, this, she can go here or this needs to be worked on. Or, you know, I see that she's missing this and this could make it yeah. better. You know what I mean? I think it's that, yeah. but I, I'll tell you for me. The defense with these girls, I, I just, I wish I could get them all. I mean, cause I know that's one thing I, I, I mean, I know how to teach, but I know how to, yes. you got to see, I have a 10 year old that I trained. She's got impeccable defense. That little yes. girl moves and slips and weaves and bobs. And, you know, I don't know if she could dance or not, but she can move her head, you know? Yes. So like, I love that. Cause I teach defense first before I even teach you how to throw a punch, you know how to move your feet and you know yeah. how to move your head. And then I'll teach yeah. you how to throw your hands because yeah. teaching you how to punch, that's easy. It's everything yeah. else. that's not. Yeah, that's the harder part for sure. Um, yeah. Yes, Ronica Jeffries was on the fight when I fought um, when I fought Ashley. Um, Jamie Clampett was there. I can't remember if she was fighting on the card or if she was oh, just Jamie. there, but I know Jamie Clampett was there. Yes, Ronica also was on the card. I can't remember who she fought, but yeah, she was on the card. Uh, I can't remember who else, but well, it probably was there, but it was so long ago. Yeah, I just know I remember Melissa Hernandez was there because she came back to my dressing room because I had talked to her a lot before that because we were supposed to fight several times and we just never ended up fighting each other. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I fought in New York a couple times. I fought her there and then I fought um, Amanda Nunez, I think. Was that her name? No, Amanda Nunez is an MMA fighter. <laughs> Jesus Lord, what is wrong with me? You fought Amanda Nunez, you big girl. I would like to fight Amanda Nunez. No, She's not no. even in your school. <laughs> oh my gosh what was her name um what the hell was her name melissa come on this is what you ella nunez i knew it was a freaking nunez oh ella, ella nunez ella nunez okay okay <laughs> i fought her in 2008 too like right after ashley and that was at main street armory in rochester oh okay oh i know rochester yeah yeah i don't think um, so I don't. I, I mean, I think I was at that fight. I don't remember. You might have been. Yeah. I just didn't meet you there. Yeah. Didn't have that. We didn't get that lucky. But oh, um, that's okay. Um. So I mean, you already kind of touched on. I mean, my, you know, my show is about the truth, and it's about the behind the scenes BS and all the stuff that all of us have went through to get women's boxing where it is today. Um. It didn't just happen overnight. Um, you already kind of touched on a few of the things that you had to deal with. Is there anything else that sticks out that was like, um, like really bad or like real, like just totally jacked that you had to go through to get overcome some hurdles? I mean, I think it was more like, I just, I never really focused on those things. I just kind of like went through it and was like, okay, now I know what to look out for. So right. I kind of like just left the past in the past. And now, like, even now, like, you know what happened to me? I realized that I started getting mad at boxing and it's not, and it started to affect my love for doing boxing. Right. So I realized I had to separate the two. So I'm not heavily involved in boxing. I know what I know. I watch the fights. I study the fights, you know, I'll do my own little stuff, but I like my personal life is not boxing. I'm not around. I mean, sometimes I'll watch the fights. Sometimes I won't watch the fights. You know what I mean? Yes. Because I learned that it's just not healthy for me you know, with yeah. that, because it's like, I've just been through so much. Like I've, I've technically been doing this since I was 17 and I didn't, I started competing at 21 and I've been in this sport for more than half my life. So to me, it's like second nature, you know, yeah. and, and it's just so much, there's just so much more to life for me than that. But exactly. and I'm not saying like anybody else, but I'm just saying like, so for me personally, like 
I think I've just tried to like put that all aside because if I laugh now, I have to laugh and I realize like, listen, what's going to happen is going to happen. And I'm going to go and box because I love to box. I'm going to box right. always. Whether I fight or whether I don't, I'm going to box. And so that's what I did. I showed up at the gym. And I said, I'm here to, I'm here to just because I want to be here today. And when I didn't want to box, I didn't box. Yeah. And that's okay too because I didn't have to. Like I don't start camps. Like why? Like I, I see some people like, oh, I, I never get out of camp. And I'm like, I used to be like that when I was in my 20s. But not me anymore. I don't get out of shape. But I'm not yeah. like I when I when I'm not not in camp, hardcore like training well, for I'm, a fight. You're just I'm staying in, in shape. I'll tell you what I do when I'm not in camp. I don't spar. I don't need to. I but I'll come in. I'll hit the bag when I feel like I want to. If yeah. not, I'm I'm consistent with my strength and conditioning. Consistent with it. I'm either going for a run, or I'm doing my strength is really my primary because yeah. I want to maintain my I want to maintain my muscle. That's most yeah. important to me. And my bone density, obviously. You know, my bone density is very high because I've been lifting weights since I was, you know, I was 17. I've been lifting weights. I always work with the strength and conditioning coach, you know, or a strength coach. And then I got – now Phil is my first actual strength and conditioning. You know, but I've always worked with the strength coach because I always knew the importance of it. So yeah. – and my nutritionist. My nutrition and my – that's what I do. I work on my – I keep my nutrition right and I keep my strength up. As long as I do that, I have no problems making weight. I can start camp eight weeks out, seven weeks out, six weeks out, and I'm fine. Yeah. I know I have a structure to my sparring. I have a structure to my day. Every day there's a plan. There's always a plan. My coaches are always on the same page, and yeah. wherever there's a problem, we figure it out. And my nutritionist is on. And my my diet coach is on the same page. Everybody. So I'm. The, I love yeah. the team that I have. It's a well-oiled machine. So. Yeah, yeah. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Type of thing. Um. So lastly, um, I always like, what is the message that you would like to give to all the young girls out there um, that are either up and coming or thinking about getting into boxing? Like, what's the message you would like to send to them? Just be, don't try to be anybody but yourself. Yeah. Take from everybody, but develop your own style. Look around, have your, and you know, and, and even like, I just, you know, just, you can learn from everybody. Don't just pick one person and be like, oh, that's it. Learn from everybody because everybody's yeah. got something to teach. And Absolutely. don't forget it. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, and do your research. <laughs> yeah, do your research. Your do research. your research. Um, study fighters from the past. Female fighters from the past. Um, you can take something from so many people. That's the one thing that I always did um, was, you know, study other fighters that, that were like my style. Cause you can always, always learn something new. And we always gym hopped a lot for sparring and different things, which I'm sure you do too. But I always took any, everything in from all the different, different coaches that I could, I might not always use it or apply it, but I always wanted to hear what they had to say. Of um, sometimes they had some good damn information that I didn't realize, or I didn't know I wasn't doing, or that I might've missed, or my coach might not have seen at the time. Um, so, yeah, like I always tell people, take as much information as you can from anybody that has information that's, you know, accurate or that yeah, knows the business. That's got or, the experience. It's, it's where, where are they getting their information from? Who are right. they? Like I always ask, like I've had people try to give me advice. Like, okay, what's your background? I have a right to ask. What's your background? Who have you studied under? What have you done? Yeah. So I just ask exactly. these questions. You know what I mean? And, and that's another thing. Like I, I love – with my strength and conditioning, I love the fact that Phil was a fighter. You know, he was an MMA fighter. Um, and he also, he worked boxing as well. You know, he trained at Buddy right. McGurch's gym. And he's been around the game for a long time. And he's worked with high-level fighters. And he sees, and he's, you know, he worked at American Top Team. And he's been around all these these fighters and he's worked with them. And I see, you know, you know high-level strikers. And, and I love that he knows things. And I've learned things from the MMA side that could help my game a bit too. You yeah. I mean? it's, there is. There absolutely is. 100%. 100%. Michael Orr, what's up, buddy? Thanks for chiming in. How are you? Um, yeah, you can literally take stuff from anybody. And that's the always the big thing I tell them because I know a lot of people that are like, oh, I can't listen to them like they're not my coach or like they're not my but stable. I was like mate. that too. But I was like that too because I was afraid. I had fear because it was like this. It was like this. this they had this territorial stuff, you know, where they had to like, you know, you couldn't. And I couldn't work mitts with anybody else because yeah. – you know what I mean? It was like this big thing. And now I I'm hated like, doing bits with other people. There's certain people like, that I wouldn't do them with, but I'll tell you, there was some people like I loved it when I was in California and I worked mitts with well, actually I worked with Tommy Brooks Brooks for a little bit 
and he actually brought me to Terrific Gist. So I worked yeah. with Tommy or I worked with Mr. Terrific. Um, and then I worked with, it's with Bismarck Bruce. He trained Ozzy Duran. And, you know, I, I did get some mitt work. And then when I was in California, you know, I got to do mitt work with some of my teammates. You know, um, yeah. you know I even worked, did mitts with Victor Ortiz. You know, yeah. uh, well, I, Rattel, just, other I didn't, my husband, um, when he took over coaching after um, I kind of separated with Sam um, and my husband took over the coaching he does like the Mayweather style mitts. Like he does mitts like nobody I've ever done mitts with. And when you do, when you do mitts that way for so long, Oh, you can't do like it. You're just the rhythm and you're so in tune with the mitts and the way that it's going. And then to go try to do mitts with a different coach who does it. It's frustrating. Not at all like that. One, it's frustrating Two, I feel like it's almost too slow. And then a lot of times, like the way, I always had problems with the way they would connect with the mitts. Like either they, they would hit too hard or they would pull back. And so then it, you'd hurt your wrist or you'd hurt your arm because you're trying to reach for. So like we just had it down to a science. Like he was just so good with the mitts. Work he still you. is. Work but that like we were in sync and I would mm -hmm. always go to other gyms and I, I would do mitts with them because I didn't want to disrespect them at their ass. Like, hey, I want to do like do mitts with me. And I always would, but like, I never went full out like on the mitts because I was a, like, it was uncomfortable. No, I get it. I guess. It's it so was funny. You're, you're nicer than me because when somebody says, oh, let me do some mitts with you. I'm like, no, I'm good. And they look at me and I'm like, I used to never. I mean, I, I have said that before, but yeah. I mean, some of them, I'm, yeah. you know, if it was somebody like, I'm like, man, like, I feel like I should, I like should the do, mood or, yeah, I should like do a round. But you know what? I don't like that with who wraps my gloves, when who puts my gloves yeah. on. I don't, yeah. I get very, I'm very particular. I wrap my own hands. I always yeah. have, but when I put my gloves on, I'm like, they're doing it. I'm like, no, stop. <laughs> like I'm so, and I let it's everybody just, know. I said, listen, I'm particular. If you don't do it right, yeah. I'm going to have somebody else do it. <laughs> yeah. Like take it off and we gotta, we gotta fix it. Cause it's not right. And they know um, that I'm particular. Yeah. You so. don't know what I mean. It's just, you get in that comfortable like zone and then someone else comes in. And it's like, you're, you're jacking this all up. Like, this feels like <laughs> shit. Like, I don't, this is a no. This is a no. Yeah. This is a no That's for me. That's so funny. That's um, funny, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, I, I think that I pretty much covered about just about everything that we could talk <laughs> about. But is there anything that you could think about that we missed that you want people to know? I don't think so. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, y'all, because Maureen uh, will be fighting soon. <laughs> Um, it has been announced, but uh, the opponent should be announced real soon. So keep your eye out. Um, make sure that you guys, uh, hopefully, we're hoping, crossing fingers, that it may be on the zone. Um, or we can watch the fight live either way, one or the other, somewhere. Um, and that this will get her in the ranks for the undisputed road before retirement. Because that's the goal. I, I appreciate I appreciate you, Brooke, more than I can express. Thank yeah, you for it doing was, this. Yeah, and I appreciate you for coming on the show. It means so much to me that all of um, that all the even I feel like it's a sisterhood between all of us. Um, even though we never met, it's like it's even like, though it's we like never met in person. Like I feel like I know you because I I know I grew because up knowing your whole story program. because we fought at the same time. So like I knew and, and we, we walked, were at the same we weight. Similar, yeah, and we walked similar paths. You know, yeah, what I mean? very or, similar paths. Um, so I feel like I already know you. Anyways, um, it's do. funny when a lot of people come on. I mean, it's just so easy to talk to you guys because one, well, one, we live the same stories, similar stories. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like it's like the sisterhood of all of the fighters. Like, well, I can't say all of them because there are some that are not like that. But the ones that are, it's like we can talk like all day. Like we literally are long lost sisters or best yeah. friends. Yeah. Um, but I'm so humbled and so honored that everybody is everybody I've talked to. Like I said, I'm booked out all the way through April of 2024. Yeah. I'm excited with so many amazing, amazing people coming on that are just like, you know, I don't normally do that, but like for you, I will. And That's I mean, great. that like made me like want to cry because I'm just like, like you actually know me. Of course. You know, I, I know, know, you. know you. Yeah, of course. And I'm like, but it's like surprising, you know, and I've been out of the game for 10 years. So, I mean, yeah, it's been a while. You've left, but you've left an imprint, you know, those yeah. that know, like we said, those that don't know. And yeah. it, it's such a, it's so nice. And I mean, granted, we, we may not have crossed paths physically, but like, you know, I know what you've done and I know yeah. that you've been around. And for me, that's, 
that's enough to respect you. I mean, the game, yeah. of course, the fighting, but everything else. Because I know if you fought around the time I did, you went through the same bullshit I did. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 100%. And, and, and to get yourself belts, you know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's not easy. You yeah, know, no. you did it. And so, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, you overcame a lot of obstacles. And, and that's that's commendable. We all did. Yeah, we that's all right. did. 100% we all did. And we had it rough. Let me just say we had it rough. But but I, you know, I, I am so blessed that I have the followers that I do, the fans that have supported me for so yeah. long. And, and that have never given up. But the fans that not, didn't become just fans of my boxing, they became supporters of my life, you know, yeah. that really genuinely want me to, you know, I had so many people when I posted on my birthday that I that I, I signed the lease for my house. Everybody was just like, oh my, like, I mean, I, the yeah. offer of love was really sweet, you know, and, and everything that I'm doing. And, you know, it's 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 nice. It's, it's really, yeah. really been great. So I, I appreciate it, it. Yeah, 100%. Um, it was definitely 100% a pleasure. Um, I'm, I'm like I said, it was, I love your story. I knew most of it. I didn't know about the promoting Melissa. Um, but, <laughs> Good job, Melissa. I forgot about that. <laughs> I didn't know about the promoting Melissa. Oh, but, you too, um, Melissa. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, um, I pretty much knew everything else. I didn't have to do much research on you. I already knew, but yeah, it was such a pleasure. I'm so glad, grateful that you came on the show. Um, I will have Eric, if you have to go, you could feel free to sign off if you want. I'm just going to do my, um, closing, and then I'll be back in the green room if you want to talk after. Otherwise, no, um, I'll we can stay on. Later. But I just want to let everybody know they can follow me on Instagram. I'll post more. I promise. It's a yes. Marine, Tell yeah. them where to find you um, on all your social medias and to get updates about the upcoming fight. Yeah, for sure. It's Maureen underscore Shay um, on Instagram, Twitter Maureen Shay, and then Facebook uh, Maureen the Real Million Dollar Baby Shay. And I have a personal page Maureen Shay, but you can follow and and get all the updates on everything. I have a TikTok, I, but I'm I following all of them already. I know I'm following your stuff. <laughs> Thank you. All right, girl. Um, I will be back there with you in just a moment. Sounds good. All right. All right, guys. Um, once again, Maureen Shay. I mean, there ain't much else to say. She's the real deal, y'all. She's amazing. Her story was amazing. I hope that she touched a lot of you. And don't forget, stay tuned. She has a fight coming up on her road to undisputed before retirement, y'all. So make sure you guys pay attention. Um, check that out. Show support, okay? Um, Maureen, she deserves it. She's a veteran. She's a pioneer. She's worked her ass off to deserve this spot. So make sure you guys show up and show out. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining me tonight on No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. I hope you all enjoyed the show as much as I did. Please, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share the post. Let everybody know about the show. Um, I want this to grow, and I want people to learn. I want to spread the word of boxing and all these wonderful, wonderful, amazing people's stories. Um, so make sure you're spreading it with friends, family, um, boxing communities. Let people know about the show that it's here on Tuesdays. Um, send them, send them our way, and let have them tune in and see what they think. Ask questions, participate. Um, there's also now a donate button below down here. If you would like to donate, it does go directly to me and my show. Um, not, not necessary, but if you would like to, it's greatly appreciated either way. Please do also follow me as well as Maureen on social media platforms. I'm on all of the social media platforms. I have my boxing page under Brooke, no mercy, dear or hashtag no Brooke. And then of course I have a separate podcast page no punches pulled with no mercy on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and TikTok as well. You can always find on all of my pages, who's going to be on the show from week to week, um, beforehand. So you can, you know, set reminders and you know, who's, who's up and coming, um, on, in the following weeks. Um, ladies and gentlemen, J gentlemen, thanks again for tuning in with me tonight. I will see you all again, same time, same place next Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the next episode of No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. But until then, remember, punch hard. Nothing else matters. Bye, guys. <laughs>